Kia ora everybody and welcome to the grand finale of Bowls 5, proudly presented by Bowls New Zealand. We're back for one final night at the Pukekohe Bowling Club. We've got the six best players, I think they're the best, best six players in the world on offer today. We've got top qualifier, Shannon McElroy, Caitlin Inch, we've got Taylor Bruce and Ryan Bester, the world champions. And to get us underway in this wonderful playoff format, the stepladder elimination playoffs, it is Sheldon Bagri, Howley and Selena Goddard, look, you two have got the toughest road to hoe here. Every single rung of the ladder, Selena, you're going to have to step on it to get to the top, to have a shot to win the inaugural Bowls 5 pennant. Have you slept up? Are you rested? Are you ready to go and run the gauntlet? Yeah, I mean, this is what we've been waiting for. So, yeah, ready to get out there, hopefully put on a good performance. You're a big Top Gun fan. It's the bottom of the ninth. It's time for the big one. Are you good to go? I certainly hope so. What's it going to take today for either yourself or Selena to run the table? Uh, probably a best bet would be just being closer than the other person. There we go. Good <laughs> insight from Sheldon. We're going to let him and Selena get up and get ready for this opening game. And while they do that, let's just give you a reminder of the rules that we play bowls five under. So the only traditional element, it's four bowls per bowler. Five ends, very short, very sharp. There are no kills. Should the jack Leave the rink, it is re-spotted. Both the jack and the mat are in a fixed length. And if we get a draw, we will go to that one bowl super end, the tiebreaker to decide who will advance. Maybe Irvin has crowned the inaugural Bowls 5 champion. Let's just have a look at the table. This was after our double round robin, Shannon McElroy. He's only going to play one game today. We've got Ryan Bester and Taylor Bruce, the two world champs ranked second and third. Caitlin Inch, fourth but it will be Selena Goddard and Sheldon Bagri Howley who are going to get things underway for us. Let's just run through that schedule again, just so you can see how that step ladder elimination works. So there you see Selena and Sheldon to get us underway. Whoever wins that, they will play Caitlin, and we just keep stepping up the rung until we get to that final game, which we know already will involve top qualifier, Shannon McElroy. Let's head up and get the coin toss underway here on finals day for Bowls 5. So it is going to be Sheldon to get us underway. And there you see the wonderful camaraderie that we've seen right throughout Bowls 5. You've got to know it's serious when we've got Alex Reid coming in to provide commentary for us right the way through. Ryan Bester, this is it. This is what you competitors absolutely love. You know exactly what the format is. You guys know what you've got to do. Each individually, it's slightly different. We're set up for a cracking night of bowls, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, this is why you play bowls. Finals night of any competition. And um, yeah, we'll just see how it unfolds. If one of these two competitors can get a win here and then another win, uh, then keep that momentum going and see if, you know, Shannon at the end, you know, just hops on and plays the five ends. If he can come in cold and start nailing it like he has throughout the last couple of weeks and to get the top spot in the tournament. Yeah, that's the thing. He got on a real roll. I think he started one win in his first four games, and then Alex Shannon just got on that roll. I think it was six straight heading into tonight's finals. Yeah, he's been incredible. He's forgotten how to miss, really. You know, the number of good shots we've, we've seen him play in a reasonably full range. Not so much the full butter drive from, from Shannon in recent weeks. He's just been smothering the jack and, and forcing uh, other players to to play through. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if he can continue that on, waiting there, as you say, at the top of the rung. Now, yeah. one change that we've been made, I'll just jump in here because we have seen over the course of the previous weeks of Bowls 5 that our wonderful umpire and markers, that is Margaret and Sue, they have been doing both of those duties. This is finals, so we have ramped it up a notch. And all we want Sue and Margaret to do today is just concentrate wholly and solely on their umpiring duty. Oh. So what you will see is we see another stunning bowl by Selena Goddard, as you will see the other players actually doing the marking duties for each of these games. And so, again, that there just to allow our umpires to just do that singular role. And again, all the players more than happy to provide the marking duties. Not bad when you mark as the current world champion, Taylor Bruce. That's not the worst way to Look play a game ball. of bowl. Oh, my goodness gracious. I think it helps out because the players, we kind of know what we're going to ask. Mm. Like, because it is a bit of a different format, so... Might just be a bit more quicker what information up? and uh, oh, yeah. really help the game. Is that the one to the side? That's a great shot there yeah. by Sheldon. Okay. Is that uh, level with the jack? Or? Oh, 
No, it's about a uh, bowl and a half short. Okay. There you go, we will have some say our know, markers. Um, if it falls down that way, Nicely is it going to touch the jack? As well. It'll fall forward and no. Okay. <laughs> if people haven't been tuning in um, the previous weeks, um, you're only allowed to go to the head once after your third bowl, so information from the marker is, is really quite crucial. And it's going to be interesting to see when we see bowlers take that opportunities, and it's interesting we've got Taylor Bruce doing the um, marking duties for this one. Alex, I think she might have been one of the only bowlers who at one point was in such a predicament that she actually went, I think it was third, might have even been one second down, right? end of one of her yeah, round robin round. games because of the, the the, just the necessity yeah. of how her game was balanced at that time. Yeah, she did, and there are times where, when her head <clears> sets up like that. The other thing we've allowed the markers to do is to provide a little bit more information, so those who've tuned in in previous weeks and tonight will, will find that the markers are allowed to elaborate a little bit on, on their answers just to give that full picture to the players. Just a reminder, this is the third time that Sheldon and Selena have played each other, of course, meeting twice in our double round robin, and it's one apiece. It was Selena winning the round one what clash by a score Sheldon. of six to one, and then Sheldon with a real nice bounce back after he made a few adjustments throughout the course of this competition and actually blanked Selena in the oh. round six clash by a score of eight to love. He drew incredibly well in that game as, as, as well. Well, here's Selena with the last bowl. At the moment, she is holding one. Trying to see. That's probably just going to be short, very much so. But it is going to be Selena Goddard that's going to take first blood in this one. Yeah, I think Shell can be leave just to drop one, one there. With, um, three pretty short balls. There we go. There's confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> Great to have. The uh, bowlers agreeing to do this as well. And so we move to end number two. Now I know you guys have been, the, the camaraderie has been awesome and we can tell that you guys play a lot of bowls together, Ryan, and, and you genuinely are quite good mates, I think, yeah. right across the board here. Did you notice though on the drive here to the Pukekohe Bowling Club tonight that things maybe were a little bit quieter in the minivan possibly? Yeah, yeah, I think everyone's yeah, really focused uh, when it comes finals time. So, yeah, but yeah, we've all been great friends. And, yeah, over the last couple of weeks, we've been really, it's been really good to hang out with um, with everyone, get to know everyone just a little bit better. Obviously, um, the other five players are, you know, are blackjacks. Um, I'm always playing against them. So <laughs> it was good in the, those couple of triples games to finally play with some of my, some of my mates. It's better to be playing with them than against them. I was going to say, you've been... Would you ever consider, because I know you spend a bit of time, your partner's a Kiwi. Yeah. Are you allowed to switch nationalities if you wished? Oh, yeah, if you if you wish, I'd have to live over here a little bit, but um, I'm always be Canadian, Canadian blood. I love that. I actually, I do love yeah. that. Although I can tell you right here, I was waiting for that to come in as well, because I'm sure there would have been... What would it take? Maybe a national selector sitting in the back going, are you sure? My son ever gets in the, in the team, then maybe. <laughs> well, I was about to say, Harry Harry is eligible. Yeah. Right, so, so we're backwards from there, right? That sounds good yeah. to me. So I'll do a quick quick uh, hi to Rachel, Monica, and Harry. Uh, thanks for letting me come over and appreciate all the support. Well, we should be the ones actually saying hi to Rachel, Harry, and Monica for allowing us to have you for this length of time because yeah. it has been really enjoyable having your insight, your knowledge. This is a very interesting head that we're forming on this one, and now Selena needs to pull up. It's also one of, one of the coolest nights in the building tonight, so that might, that might change a little bit of the speed, as you can see a couple of loose balls early on, so that's something that we can watch through the rest of the night as well. Yeah, it, it's something I know that's been quite interesting, and uh, I'm fascinated by it, because I suspect I was probably a little bit like a lot of people, thinking, oh, look, it's, it's a wonderful indoor facility, and I've got to say again, the Pukekohe Bowling Club is, is a wonderful facility. We thank them and the Cozy Club as well for their lovely hospitality. But I would have been very much along the lines of, well, look, the conditions won't change. What's going to be the difference? However, I've learned, again, that that is not the case. So what is it about the cooler conditions that are going to impact tonight's bowls, Ryan? Sometimes it, yeah, it might just change the speed of the green, maybe like half a second, maybe a little bit of turn. Um, just because we're playing the same and, and to be fair, yet. the rink's been really good, as you can see in the previous weeks, so how good the, the balls have been. So Selena, most of it's on the white, 
Yeah. So um, it's about that. Much how much she has to draw okay. the shot, or she might look to have a bit of attacking at the you at that shot ball. Selena up one. Lining up on the backhand by the looks. Even if she doesn't get the shot, you should be looking to get another good second for the room for Sheldon. I'll so tell you what. Reasonable track. Oh. oh, what a mighty effort that was. Settles, she'll, she's got second shot, but now the bonus ball effectively for Sheldon. Sure. These bonus shots just can be amplified here on finals night. So important, isn't it? Particularly over the 5 in format where there's not that much time to recover either. A huge difference being two up or two down on the last end instead of three. We are <coughs> going to be level one. Here we see confirmation from Taylor Bruce. Just the one for Sheldon Bagri Howley. And so one apiece as we head to the middle end. It's interesting too when we talk about the temperature of the television rink. TV lights are no longer hot. You know, the time's gone by, you'd have the TV lights would sort of emit quite a lot of heat so it becomes a heater and the rinks and players would get quite warm. The TV lights we have here are not doing that so there's not a huge impact from, from the surrounds here either. Sheldon dropped a few short coming this way last night and he's made a great correction here I think. Once he gets onto that mat, it's a very good opening ball from Sheldon. That's a stunning opening ball. Good shot. From the man who we've we've learned a lot about over the course of our broadcast month. He's a planes. Aeroplane restoration technician. It's tiger moths and de Havilands. And so it's a fascinating blend. When you look across our six athletes, we've got Ryan Bester. Professional bowler, really ensconced in the sport. Shannon McElroy, painter, plaster. Sean Bagri Howley does aeroplane restoration. He's currently playing against graphic designer, digital content creator, and Selena Goddard. We've got the relief teacher and Taylor Bruce, and now a freshly minted, graduated paramedic, and Caitlin Inch. What a glorious potpourri of talent and skill and creativity that we've got on display. Should write that down somewhere, that sounded really good. It's not even, and, it, and, and that's just talking about what they do off the rink. <laughs> on the rink, they're jolly good as well. Selena's got, oh, is it gonna turn? Of the four hands, this back hand coming, the first, third, and fifth ends, probably the be. easiest, yeah, the best hand, so see some really top front balls on this back hand. is almost in the middle of the jack, so you are just a bowl behind. Right. One of those hands, it looks like you guys can and just trust Selena's the bowl to, to come back into the head. Level. Sheldon here, we're looking to close it down. It's a pretty good target for Selena, so try to trail the jack and just bump his ball in behind the jack. Beautifully smooth delivery. Ooh, what's this line here? He's got the line, he just needs the running. Hey, how's it going to sit? Oh, a little bit stiff if it stays yeah. standing up. <laughs> it's a good shot. Might be good enough for second, possibly. The shadow from that over here does make it just a little hard to tell. It's definitely one in a measure, though. Usually, Stephen will probably play a little bit more weight, but that could make the ball hang out wide. So, very close to the first two. Clears the front blue. Be very close here. Just needs to get around the front one. Try. Two. One. Two. There you go. So, Sheldon, a very good position here. What's Selena going to do next? <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer it. I can't say, sorry. <laughs> She's too unpredictable. <laughs> Sheldon here, looking, thinking. Ryan Bester, what do you think's churning through that mind of his? Well, so how far low is the going to play backhand one? with weight, trying to bump her one onto the jack of one of the balls. Maybe get both balls out. 
So if I was that far off the purple uh, Michelle, I'd be playing the forehand. Just try to get another one on the mat, but not right beside the jack. You don't want to make the target bigger. No, so if Selena hits the outside blue ball, or I get the other blue ball on the jack and spit out to that side of the ring. So if he puts one there, you're guaranteed maybe two or three shots. To get a game in chess, you have to go, what does the other player have? And see what shot they're going to play and try to cover that. Forehand. Exactly what he's doing. As discussed. Great oh, mindset, hurry. like. <laughs> he's going to need that to just get a bit of a wriggle on here. He's level with the jack, it's not horrific. It's in a spot. It's <laughs> useful. Could be useful. And Oh, here we go. Selena. Using the walk. Just a reminder players only get one opportunity to come up and look at the head themselves. They get to do that after their third bowl. So this means that Selena won't have this option for ends four or five. In a traditional singles game, 90% of the time the player walks up after the third ball to have a visual. Uh, but this is nice quick fun action that we have here at Bowls 5. That is the thing, a few little quirks. So if you're sitting here watching, thinking they don't do that in Bowls, well, we've just made a few changes, just switching things up a little bit. Five ends apiece. To say there are no kills, the jack will be respotted if it does leave the <coughs> rink. And this here as well, which is just that one opportunity that Selena has taken. And you can see why. When you look at that camera shot there, look at to the, the far end to where the head is. Look how completely different that angle is compared to that wonderful overhead shot that we've been treated with over the last four weeks. He's on the forehand, so perhaps just trying to dead draw this. It's cool. The opposite of what I said. Square on to the front red. Oh, oh that's edge. incredible. Two shots. That's a great result. That is a superb result. Yeah. Great bowl, Selena got her. And on finals night. How could you see the jack? On finals night, <laughs> shots like that are going to determine who's going to win these games. Who can play those big conversion shots? Well, here's the thing. That's a multiple as well. That's two yeah, shots nice. as we head to the fourth end. That's an unbelievably good bowl from Selena Goddard there. I didn't yeah. even, it didn't look yeah. like she could see the jack playing on the camera angles. So that's incredible. Well, that's the reason why we have got you know, six of the best on the planet. You could argue that, you know, this is one of the best, one of the most stacked fields that we've been able to assemble. Probably outside the likes of some of the pinnacle events. This is awesome. Oh, certainly on this side of the Tasman, um, it's fantastic to have these six players here competing in this Bowls 5 event. Oh, I think I counted up, it was somewhere over 25 uh, medals at major international competitions like World Championships and uh, Commonwealth Games amongst the six. And you can't do much better than that, really. Well, just to remind everybody, you're looking at Selena Goddard, who is a two-time national singles champion. Sheldon Bagri Howley won the national title last year, got back to the final this year as well, which is no mean feat. Your marker is the current world champion and also a self a former national singles champion and Taylor Bruce. We're standing beside Mr. Bowles, Ryan Bester, reigning world singles champion, won his first world title when he was just 19 years of age. That's a stunning shot. Back in 2004, he had the big long hair with the spiral perm. He looked like the lead singer for Def Leppard. Pearl Jam, Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Got the voice of Eddie Vedder as well there. I'd love to have his voice. <laughs> and then of course we've still got Shannon McElroy. Look at this. Oh, that's a beautiful oh, response as well. Shot. We've still got Shannon McElroy, a former world champ, two-time national champion, and Caitlin Inch herself again, a national champion as well back in 2020. So just in terms of the national titles. Oh, it's ridiculous, really. Yeah. Yeah, and just I'll oh, remind people as well, if you're wondering, well, why aren't you saying Ryan Bester? Why, why aren't we talking about him as a national champion of Canada? He is, but the, the different format, um, Ryan, meant that you didn't really have the opportunity to really battle for that singles title because you, you were playing with family and yeah. pairs and fours. Yeah, yeah, if you won the fours or pairs, you didn't get a crack at the singles. So, um, uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to win the Australian Open singles one year, so... You almost count that as a national we will, we will take that. So there we go. Another national champion. But we can see the first couple of ends. It was a bit scratchy. Look at look at the balls now, the previous two ends, getting on their jacks. So that's what we're going to see with those players who are fresh coming on, how quickly they can adapt to 
the conditions and settle into the game. So well, it's going to be a huge storyline tonight. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you guys have needed, that's one thing. Have you found that the ness, the need for adaption quicker? Because you're normally playing best of 21 ends or first to 21 in some instances. So you could be out on the rink for an age. You were here, it's really short, really sharp. How have you found that need to really dial in? Has it sort of sharpened you a bit mentally? I, th I think you want to win. You have to win one of the first two ends. It's, you know, if you fall behind, um, players at this level, it's too easy to kind of cover all the aspects. We haven't really seen too many people, you know, get a three on the last end to mm. win. Mostly, who's ever leading the last end kind of wins the game. The only multiples have really been, as you say, in the first two ends, haven't they? When I think back to the threes, and maybe we've had maybe two fours in the entire event, and they've all been end one or two with one player's trying to find their weight. It's a bit like tennis, you know, you probably break earlier on to, and before they get their rhythm. Or I'm a big baseball fan, you get the pitcher early before they get they settle into their routine. So there we go, just the one to Sheldon, so he'll lead things off here on our fourth end. So three, two, Selena Goddard leads. Yeah. Just would you be a Blue Jays fan, would you? Yeah, Blue Jays and San Francisco Giants. What's the bet? We're going to go to a super end. This is the fifth and final end of this oh, match. Oh, excuse me. Yes, difference. you're quite right. It is the fourth end. Sheldon, score a one. We go to a super end on the, that bottom rung of the ladder. Be great for television. Well, Selena, though, will have that advantage of going last, and she does have that one-shot advantage as we head to the decider. Makes this bowl important, doesn't it? I think there's only five super ends to the whole thing, which I thought there would be a lot more. Surprised me, actually, yeah. But, you know, I think we've said in previous previous nights and we'll all be saving it for finals night. Well, Sheldon will be feeling confident because he has had, he's been involved in a couple of those tiebreakers. Ryan Bester and Shannon McElroy, when we think all the way back to, to opening night, that was the first game and we were all thinking, That's hello, is it going to be yeah, like this every, every time? A bit of a two loose balls from all the players. Pressure. I've got to say, the... Stakes a smidge higher than what they have been through the first seven nights of Bowls 5. This one has to run as well. Trying to drift onto the target area. Must be a good visual from Selena there just to get in between those two blue balls with good weight. Of course, through the last seven game nights, we've been preaching so much about ends and shots and how it affects the ranking all of that throw it out the window it is just now all about winning and advancing it's an interesting in. clogged the little, backhand i was going to say it's a little barricade just sort of forming across the One. front of the head there pink floyd the wall on this jack first. She's got two balls remaining. The thing is, the, the balls in the road are sitting flat, so you'd have to hit them pretty hard to He's hold it well into the head. That's a good ball. It's going to come use, it could be useful though. Very useful. Well, this is the time now where both of these athletes think on themselves. Just one to Sheldon, so at the moment we are setting up for a super end. Selena Goddard. Go. This has to run too, guys. Bowls to rest through. How's the weight? Had good enough weight, but just crashed on the shot ball. She has got second, though, with that. You can see that now. So Sheldon holds one, and he's got one bowl left. He's been up to the head. Waited till the very last end to utilize that as he starts to... What's he going to do? Holding the shot, so he's holding the draw. I think no matter what... His ideal shot is to, you know, get one on the right-hand side of the mat as you're looking at your screen. Uh, but um, Selena can run; she gets the jack in the ditch, or you move one of the balls. Um, or at least go to a super end if Shell does get two. So he's sitting there, contemplating. <laughs> so Sheldon <laughs> used up his going to the mat end, last end, as normal. Have you got it clear in your mind, Sheldon? Oh, I think so. That's what we like to hear, buddy. Just got to dry and draw it. <coughs> there you go. Dry and draw it, he says. Fair enough. But uh, I need to be pretty close to the red bowl, but if I've got right, the right weight, I shouldn't hit it all the way in. 
you go. Great that the bowlers that's are happy the, to give these kind of insights. The <laughs> well, there you go. He's got his. Yeah, backing yourself at this point. Pressure on Selena. Well, this is what all the years of training and I don't know. People be looking at Sheldon and going, he's a young man. He's been playing bowls for a very, very long time. Got all it out about. Smooth. What's the track like? That red. Just clear the red. Just clear the red. Up. Oh, that's such oh, good that's weight. A, that's a great roll, and he holds two. He holds two. As Ryan predicted, now we've got a. Uh, I think Selena has to run. If she gets a jack, she can win. 100. She gets one drive. Yeah. If she drives a shot, she can get a shot. It'll still be two down because both balls are about the similar distance away. Just remember, though, if she does run and she just gets it slightly, there is a blue bowl at the back. Decision made, locks in. Here we go. Okay, on the run. Trying to win the game or save the game. That's in a great area. Oh. And she moved it slightly as well. Oh, goodness gracious me. Yeah. Who's got shot now? Because it's taken it off the spot. Pretty sure it's still blue, so I think we're going to have our first super end. Exciting. It's a great shot there from Selena. Her, her back end run yeah. is uh, lovely. She won the New Zealand singles with a shot like that, uh, defeating Taylor Bruce. I remember watching that. Beautiful goal. Well, Selena's not conceding it, so we may need Margaret, who, as I said, is just going to act as umpire today. No. Yep. Yeah. Suppose when you play a big ball like that in your career, Ryan, is it something that gives you confidence? Like Selena will now know that her backhand runner yep. can be trusted having won a national title with yep, it. Yep, 100%. So. Yeah, she played the percentages there. She could have won the game, but she had lots of chances of saving yep. the game as well, which she did. So the all important coin Here we go. Right. One. Super oh, it's quite exciting, isn't it, on yeah. this first game of finals night? You call, I call. Here comes the coin toss. Not a small coin. Good toss as well by Margaret. It's ahead, down to one bowl. <laughs> one bowl? Um. Okay. Yeah. Now, so, the like tactics. So we've had a few <laughs> looks at these, and I, I know that there is oh. the thought. Do something Drag Jack <laughs> through, put good. it in the ditch. <laughs> Basically sort of I think put everything to bed. I honestly think the perfect ball is obviously your front to back toucher or a foot away. You don't want to put one right beside it and give them a chance to Bowling run again. A foot away puts some doubt in their mind and what shot to play. So the big thing here is it's about the track. You really want to be in line with the jack, yeah. whether it is in front or behind. It's about the line yeah. that they end up bowling. Well, Selena Bowl. looking to draw. Again, it's about that track. She just gets on the mat, get some pressure on Sheldon. Just left it a wee if, bit open. I wonder if he was mentally prepared to draw this. Yeah. Well, we know he's an assertive player. This is one bowl. This is his bowls five campaign on the line. It goes. He's played the side where he might run into that ball. It's going to take off. There it goes. It's going away. This could be interesting if it keeps rolling, if it keeps rolling. Uh, we can't other. see where that other it's a red. is. Uh, it's a red. Yeah, red. And concession there mm. from Sheldon. Uh, oh my goodness gracious me, what a start <laughs> to the opening night. Oh, Sheldon. <laughs> Mate, you've given us so much fun over the course of the last eight weeks you look like you've enjoyed yourself i know though inside you're a little bit burning do you feel as though that one was just uh, there for you well that one there yeah like um just in your line. yeah it was sort of right on the line so i've tried to just pinch it and i i know that if you just go a wee bit tight down that hand it just it rips straight away and it's the holding hand so it just holds and holds but no she uh she played a couple of last bowl rippers that um that changed the game i think uh every end I held shot before the last bowl was played, whether it was mine or Selena's, so like, can't, uh, can't argue with it. Enjoyed the experience? Oh, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. So now I get to go and mark and watch the real part. <laughs> Selena, there you go. First step taken. Bit of confidence there? Um, yeah, I mean, sort of just 
try take one bowl, one end, one game at a time, I think in this format. Um, you know, you can only, you're only presented with different ends and different situations every time. So, you know, try and make lemonade out of the lemons as well and um, see how long the run can go for. Well, congratulations. You're advancing, Sheldon. Thank you so much for everything you've contributed to Bowls 5. Let's just check the scoreboard here and there you see it. Selena Goddard with the win. The asterisk means that she won it with the super end tiebreaker. So up next on Bowls 5, it is going to be the yin and yang of New Zealand Bowls. It's going to be teammates Caitlin Inch versus Selena Goddard as Bowls 5 continues. Dear Diary, my move to Somerset has been quite the page turner. Sally wants me on the croquet team, but Beth says Mahjong is where all the fun is at. Oh, I can hear Barry's choir from here. <laughs> and Kenneth's passionate about getting everyone's heart rate up. But Molly and I opted to do a whole lot of nothing today. A wonderfully underrated pastime. High performance sports requires a laser focus every day. To get the best out of everyday life, consider vision correction by the professionals at Laser Eye Centre. With clinics in Pukekohe and New Plymouth and state-of-the-art theatres in Hamilton and now Tauranga, you'll be living your best life in no time. Get a free assessment, plus your Bowls Hub number will get you a special offer on your procedure. Easy! Welcome back to finals night on Bowls 5. It is ready for our next game and it's going to be Selena Goddard going up against Caitlin Inch. Here's the nice good wheeling coin toss. So we are getting ready for this one. We've got Alex and the Professor Shannon McElroy top qualifier as well. How are you feeling ahead of tonight? I feel great. I get to sit back and Watch all the carnage unfold, and, <laughs> you know, as we see in the last game, well, anything's possible. Well, there we go, so, straight out the gate, and we've got a tiebreaker. And interestingly enough, that's uh, another tiebreaker that Selena has been involved with. Because, funnily enough, when we look at the round robin results from these two, Caitlin with a 6 5 victory in the round four match between these two and that was that game where it started with a four and then there was a three and a two and a one and then it was one on the last end and they were just basically started off eating shots for Brecky. <laughs> but in the end, uh, just Caitlin getting it and then when they came back again for the second time, we saw another tiebreaker. It was four apiece, Caitlin getting the job done in extras. So straight away, what we have seen, and it shouldn't really surprise us, Shannon, because they play so much bowls as a team shouldn't be surprised that they know each other's games so well. Absolutely, 100% correct there. They've played many games together in the, uh, the black shirt. And I'm, and I'm guessing they've played a lot of games each other as well. So they'll be very familiar stylistically how each, each player likes to approach this. Um, slight advantage, I would say, to Selena just coming off the rink. Yeah, now that's going to be the interesting part of this stepladder elimination. So for someone like Selena, who's... It's a big job playing the first game and trying to get to the last and have a crack at your good self there. But you do have that time on the rink. How important could that be this evening? Oh, that's that's absolutely crucial. If she can string together a couple of a couple of wins, 
she almost goes into most of the matches like oh, we start to say, you know. What's the last one? Excellent please. shot there. Thank you. But just being out there for five hands previously, that that's hugely beneficial uh, with this ladder format. So um, the first couple of hands going to be very interesting. So Caitlin, just looking backhand. Sheldon Bagri Howley is going to be the marker for this one. Margaret and Sue, our umpires. Oh. That's oh. <laughs> what a mighty effort that was. A great effort. I was going to say, I'm looking at down, that. Please. It just doesn't look like there is room for a bowl Holding to one. sneak through. Okay. Oh, the moment you got um, through the gap clean, she would have thought, oh, I've nailed it. Gosh. Just oh, a the jet little bit unlucky to pop the jet. Uh, it's about that far from the edge of the mat. Oh, yep. Still on it. And how yeah. far short's my bowl? Uh, about eight inches. Okay, and Caitlin, second shot? Uh, probably about another bowl in front. Okay, yep. Okay, now that's a really good angle because as you can see looking down, very hard for Selena to see exactly where that, that jack is sitting on the mat. So really good. And you heard the instructions that Sheldon was relaying back there. So basically what the marker is trying to do is allow the bowler to have that wonderful mental image that we actually get from the camera directly above. This image here, that's what they're trying to do. That's a beautiful bowl. Isn't it interesting too that the official um, measuring speak of bowls has always been imperial? You just learn it, don't you? Yes. That's what you speak in feet and inches if you play this game. <laughs> we have got rid of the white clothes, but imperial remains. Well, then we go metric in 68, just so. <laughs> putting it out there. Quite often in internationals, Mark, as well, how do you like to your, uh, your, your your measurements? What is your, what is, what is your unit of here? Or, yeah. Usually between the three options, you get it right, one of them. <laughs> one there has really opened the door here for Selena. So this is the advantage of playing the last game and winning. She started this end very, very well. So gets a little edge in these first couple of hands until Kate can get settled in. But it's got to get around that front blue though. She has. Oh, oh but might stop. It hadn't got that feather, it was there for three. Yeah, she would have crashed on her own bowls. And... Yes. Confirmation here. Yeah. Two seconds. Good start. It is two, so there we go. Another good start. Another very good start. That is confident bowls. The red, Caitlin in the blue. And as time goes on, if, if just let's just say Selena wins this game and she plays the next game. What what generally will happen is that it's not the good ones that you play, but she'll probably play the least amount of non-effective. So she'll have more effective bowls, which is around this map. And as you can see here, straight into it's it. under Dolan consistently now. That's one of the great things about this particular format. It wouldn't stun if someone got on a roll and won two, three, four. Well, in the case of something, she's got to win four in a row to give herself a shot. I just hope that uh, if someone did, they get tired by the time they get to me. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose when you win a national title, you're usually winning five or six games or seven games post section, aren't you? So it's not, yes. it's not unusual to any of you guys to sort of push your way through an event and win five or six, seven, eight in a row. No, 100%. Um, I just feel that there'll be in these rounds here now that you lose your out, the intensity naturally is going to go through the roof once again. Well, here's the other thing. While we've got you in commentary, we know we've seen over the course of our eight game nights what a cerebral bowler you are and how much you think about the game. So how much time did you spend last night contemplating the fact that as the top qualifier, you've got to come out, you're going to have 20 bowls, one game, five ends. Have, did you sit down? Have you visualised that sort of thing? Have you contemplated that? How do you mentally prepare yeah. yourself to be able to physically do what you want to do in a one-off occasion? Well, I think the, the first thing is is try and get your uh, percentages of effective bowls up uh, around that 60% at least. So if you can get to 70% to 75% effectiveness, that means three out of the four bowls have had an impact on the end. And so after that, you give yourself just the best opportunities to score shots. 
and then it's just the matter of when you play that bowl. Sometimes you might only get one opportunity or two, but it's it's when it happens. Sometimes you can spray through and then they're holding a number and you play one good one, um, which can, in previous games uh, through this event, um, I've gotten out of a couple of games with one bowl at the right time. It's a good correction here. It's a lovely shot. What a bowl. And the What's purple. Distance, so, yeah. again, uh, so, so, in front of the purple, so. Just let, listen to this. About that. Okay, and one down? One down. Okay. So, are you a little bit more freed? Because, you know, when we were talking with um, everybody who joined us in commentary, there was the element of, yes, you wanted to win the game, but there was the ends and the uh, shot. Do you feel a bit freer now, not having to worry about that? That one there? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You don't need to worry about, um, obviously, all the hard work's done to get yourself at the top of the ladder. Um, now you don't need to worry about how many ends you need to win. It's just you've got to be in front at the end of the five ends. So the, the game of singles still stays the same regardless of if it's five ends, 21 up, 25 up. It's just a bit under here. Yeah, well, there's a bit of an opening now for Caitlin who yep. finds herself down. The bonus, bonus. A couple, here. so here it is. And yeah, and then you just try and um, simplify everything, first two bowls close, to give yourself um, control on the end. And if you win three ends of the five, there's a good chance you're going to win the game. There's How's this one? It's been given lots of room to breathe. Nice line, it's a little flatter out there. One. Of the four the hands, the backhand going in that direction seems to be the one that you would argue is slightly more challenging, Shannon. Yeah, it's, it's, it's flatter, and what we mean by flatter is that the trajectory is flatter, so um, the bowl won't, won't sweep as much if you got out just a little bit. It'll hold off, and you see a lot of bowls that just outside the, the line just hug the outside of the mat. Um, so, but I do find when the first few rounds I play the other hand, and even that hand can struggle. You can, it's got more turn, but sometimes you can struggle to get the middle. I think it's you can get the middle easier on that flatter hand. Caitlin now leading off for now. Middle end. Gonna go through the jack. Oh, what a ball, what a shot. See, that that's a very good opener. Not only with the toucher, but with Selena being out here a little bit longer than him, she's moved the jack off the spot where she's been playing to. So that extra uh, yard could, could throw a, a little bit of a curveball uh, for Selena with the weight the playing field. Bad attempt. That's a great switch. It's a very oh, good wow. oh, What a shot. Very, this is ridiculous, good. these guys. Two touches to start our third end. Selena Goddard. Getting beaten. Shot on Bagri Howley to advance. To take the first step up the ladder in this step ladder elimination playoff format. Need to run a little. She's inside the line, but she can get up as far as she can. St still holding one is How far short Selena. Is Caitlin's Do we think that's in the way for Selena? Well, potentially, yeah. yeah. The risk yeah. is obviously if she turns yeah, it up, she, okay. she allows Caitlin opportunity to have a, a more of an is aggressive approach to her third. Uh, back of the ball, I think she'll go back to the backhand okay. here. Um, she can get to the red her own bowl and then flop in, turn the red past the jack high. It's a good opportunity to score multiple. To the winner of this game, world champion Taylor Bruce awaits. Does it go so smoothly? Well, she's yeah, definitely turn. up, and it's this is this is this is very good. Lovely bowl. Nice consolidation bowl. See the angle. Caitlin is reaching through with this one. And if she misses, she'll want a bowl past the head. Yeah, the weight, weight was fantastic for what she wanted. And this bowl's going to stop. That's what we were saying the Sounds other crucial. day. Yeah. Class. That's a world class bowler. A lot of players would have missed that heavy into the ditch if they missed their target area. Absolutely. Bowls to remain on this particular end. Reminder that 
Each bowler is allowed to visit the head once after their third bowl per game, though. This Let's is, go up um, and have a good look. This is actually hard to improve the head for Selena. There's holes um, that bowls can go through and paint inside the tack. All she needs to do is just make sure that she doesn't make it easier for Caitlin to get out of this. If she can just nestle in nice. on her last ball. Last. Oh, oh. That's okay, that's pretty good. So holds two. Pretty good. So she holds at the moment what could be a quite decisive break. She has slightly widened the target, just very minimal though. She's going to get a little flick off that bowl. Oh, no, this is a big end. Very big end. Well, Lena with a chance to go four up. And this would be significant to get a full ends advantage with just two ends to play. Currently holding two, Selena Goddard. The opportunity to try and get a third. Massive bowl in the context of this game. She's played it safe on the high side. She's waiting for the late turn now. Look at that. How's the weight? Oh, just just yeah. it's a couple. She so did, she did the right thing by going the high line though. Like you don't want to turn the front blue one, one um, and you're holding a yeah. <laughs> nice two like that. So had to be up, but another two feet always. on that, she would have yeah. a bonus ball. So she's up by three. She'll lead off in the fourth. Caitlin has to come home with two two ends scoring now. Absolutely. Well, Caitlin has shown she is capable. Just a reminder, the previous results, Caitlin Inch with victories over Selena Goddard in round four by the scoreline of six to five. That was a cracking encounter. And then their round nine clash needed to be decided by a super end, and on that occasion, it was Caitlin Inch with the win. After they were locked up four apiece at the end of five ends. Is it too soon to think about a second super end in a oh, row? Way, way think, too I soon, think Alex. We're going to have two or three. Hi. I think there's a good chance that we have two or three super ends in this final series. Well, we've already had one to start us off between Selena and Sheldon. Three shots and two ends for Caitlin's very achievable. I and mean, then we could see that super end playoff. And that's a nice track, going to be a little short, but she does get shot. It's about it's about four four feet slower this way. Quite often you'll see a lot of the players uh, just hug the front of the mat generally with the first ball coming in this direction. This is better, slightly inside the line. Weight's better. Is it to drift onto that mat? It'll turn just at the end towards the outside, which is good enough for shot here. She's really got a chance to absolutely slam the door on Caitlin Inch. Get one shot on this end. Basically, put Caitlin Dormy. She need four on the last. So Caitlin will probably be thinking if she could score two this end with last bowl and hold on to one on the next end. That's a, a realistic yeah. way to, to uh, force that situation. super end. Uh, you hold one. Okay. Always back, back yourself to score with your last bowl. And players this caliber often do. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a little bit disappointed that those two are a yard short. On the forehand. Still room there. Still room to lean on the slightly higher line. She should start turning in late soon. My last it's, one's it's hung off there a little. Feet. You no, get close to the hill. Yeah, point. you're sort of that far off the front of the circle, yeah. so probably two and a half feet. Real measurement coming out again. Well, she's definitely got more weight here. And this could be very good the, here. The purple side. Best Selena's bowl. Okay, that's a great shot. Beautiful shot. <laughs> a little bit of room here though. Good bowl for Selena. So, 
the cape and holding one. This. It's in the general vicinity, this. How's the weight? Just need to just kick on. We'll get a glance off the front. What does it fall? No, oh, not down enough. Here's that chance for the two with the last yes. How far would Selena's have to go for shot? Like, a couple rolls? Uh, up and over would probably be close for a measure. Yeah. Is that deciding what green she's going to take, do we think? Yeah, I think she she's just trying to identify if she turned it once, if she's still holding, then she can play confidently close to that ball. Obviously, players like know if you turn it and you're down, they'll be a little bit more cautious. They'll probably play it a bit higher. If you are sitting at home wondering why so much information is being provided by the marker, as I said, it all ties oh, into that. This could one runs, rule. This will be close. This is oh, incredible. Great shots. What a bow. That's amazing. That is outstanding. So that is two to Caitlin Inch. So it is 4-3 as we head to the last. It'll be Inch to lead on our deciding end. I can feel a super read in my eight. bones. We are, we are manifesting the, the potential of another super read. Yeah. Just saying, a one, you could hold on to one here. Just reminding the reason why Sheldon is giving so much advice and the, it all ties into that decision to only allow our bowlers to visit the head just the once. Again, it's about speeding it up. This is a, a nice quick format. Our game sort of really almost done and dusted around that. Well, yeah. in some cases, it was like 15 minutes they were rattling their way through. We've been fortunate to have um, Marcus who speak the same bowls lingo as the players and now for this final night, the players yeah. there as well. So the communication has been really nice and clear. The other thing too as well, it means that Margaret and Sue have done a phenomenal job through our opening weeks of Bowls 5 can actually sit back and do the job of just umpiring. Yeah. So again, that's respecting finals night as well, allowing them just to focus on that particular duty. How many chalk sprays have they gone through is the question. Well, you're the one who does the budget. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> there you go. Well, again, I think... In terms of that, I don't think that's on the umpire. I think that's on the person who did the budget because if you get six bowlers like we've got, oh, maybe you can expect to go through the chalk spray. Maybe next year we go, oh, they just all touch us. <laughs> we don't mark them. If it goes in the ditch, it stays there. I'll tell you what, if you bring back the same six bowlers, they've got their <laughs> eyes in on the format. You're going to go through some more chalk spray. Don't you worry about that. There's yeah. another good one from it's the Oh, that's classy. What a bowl. That's very, very good. So again, you see she's moved. Jack off the spot there as well, so it's another like readjustment the that the bowlers have to make. Uh, so that edge of the jack is in line with that edge of the bowl. Okay, yeah. Cool. So at the moment, Caitlin holding two. But a reminder as well that it will be Selena who gets the last say. She will have the final bowl. It's quite exciting. She's just got to give this a chance chance to move through the head. She hurries this, she'll end up with second, but... Beautiful track, that's yeah. the perfect green. So it is green. more jack on that side, isn't it? Is that yeah, what you're saying? It's very no. difficult now. Yeah, it's pretty second much shot jack. Selena's yeah. realistic Probably best uh, yes. outcome here. And the second shot, is that how far is that from the jack? Please. Yeah, same sort of thing, 18 inches. Yeah. But by being in front, she's just, you're just limiting your options. Um, one of the things we, we talk about details in, in the game of someone sitting on front of the jack, as long as you reach and you just pass, the, the ball's in play. Caitlin walking after, so she'll use her opportunity to come up now and have a look at yeah, not how the head is Yeah, not making any bigger. So that's a lovely shot there, just again. It's a good shot. Scoring circle. So it could be three. She Man, holds and it uh, is. Looking just to get to the purple. She gets to the purple, good chance of being second. I don't think Selena's been up, so I say we'll see her trot past us and go have a wee bow peep at what's happening. Jeez. What is this bowl? Who the silk? This is interesting. Just sailing through, I think. The line was perfect. Oh, perfect green three times. Well, she's nailed the middle, all three bowls. Yeah. Well, she's going to come up and have a look. Caitlin's already there, looking, thinking. But for Selena, that makes it a simple equation, doesn't it? Because she's going, well, I've played my line absolutely perfect three times. I just need to yes. find that weight. See, this is very interesting. 
because the forehand side for Selena, there's not much value down there. So if I'm Caitlin and I'm playing this, I'm closing off this backhand. Going good luck. <laughs> and chucking in a blocker, get Sunny in the eye. Because, as you said, Selena's played three balls down there, directly in the middle. How short's the perfect block for you, um, <laughs> It's the one that hits the ball. What are you looking at me for, okay? He's the bowler. You help. should be looking at him if you want inspiration. Yeah. We're talking about blocking at the moment. Your thoughts here, Caitlin? <laughs> no, I, I don't like playing blockers. I always put, like, a really good guide in for people to get off and get the shot, so that won't be happening. Oh, well, we can um, roll that out. What about a very short blocker? <laughs> Halfway up the green? It. It's a, it's a tough shot at the moment. Like, I'm happy just to get one and take it to the super end, obviously. So just trying to protect that shot um, and just, like, nullify all chances of Selena scoring. There's a chance if she just skims around the red, she can, like, edge my bowl out, but it's a tough shot, so... Percentages, isn't it? Absolutely. Or doing the mathematics in your head. We'll let you contemplate and compute. Thank you for the insight. We really appreciate that there. I vote for a bowl halfway up the green. I think I think in this scenario, <laughs> just the way it's set up, um, Selena needs to get at least one. It's always she's three down, so or near on. Closing off this backhand. Obviously, it's a high level of difficulty, but... Sunny in the eye, as you go stuck in the eye, but again, mud you, in the eye. You're talking about your risk versus reward. You talk about it being high degree of difficulty. Yeah, you know she's capable of delivering high degree absolutely. of difficulty bowls. Does the risk I outweigh? Think so. Does the reward outweigh the risk? As long as it's uh, short enough, you know, she's going to the back route. So I wasn't really back in. So this is the other yeah. option. So this is <laughs> just going to get the back. It's okay if the jack got to the ditch. Um, Something somehow, happens. if Selena decided to play weight through the blues and the jack got back, she's going to score with that ball. It's telling us that Caitlin's at peace with the super end, isn't it? Yes. You're just thinking, cool, if Selena's good enough to draw a second shot, it's happy days. Very oh. unlikely. Well, if she draws the shot, she deserves the win. Well, and this is yeah, the thing, and this is the thing, and Selena will be thinking, she's now in the middle of that all three balls, <laughs> and the only, the only like difference said, like, is, is two good feet away. So down there, she steered it down. She's had a chance to assess what she wants to do. Yeah. Now it is making that final decision, locking in and delivering. Got 50% of the recipe here. Caitlin holds three. Got she holds nice. the lead. It's out smooth. How's the weight? I tell you what, boys. Come on. I tell you what. I think the pressure's on. Look at this. Here. Look at this. Oh. Oh. Oh, you wouldn't have. So. That's. That's a, that is a great shot. Oh, that is a great man. shot. <laughs> oh, and it's too blue, Caitlin Edge. <laughs> oh, we yeah. wondered if it had moved. It Just <laughs> that little bit too much, <laughs> and it has. She play, she's going to play that much better. I oh, did nothing uh, wrong, right? Only yes. half a ball wider, and then and then the blue ball wouldn't have rolled onto the jack. I mean, it's a great attempt. Listen to these. Best. Listen to these scores. 6-5, four all decided by a tiebreaker, 5-4. Ladies, another absolutely outstanding. Ca oh, Caitlin, why are you shaking your head? You're the one stepping I on. Know. No, I'm yeah, stoked to be going ahead, but like Selena could not have played that shot any better. She gets a little, like a less piece of my bowl, she probably gets the shot even. So she played it great shot. And yeah, I feel very lucky to be going into the next round. Oh, you must have been feeling reasonably bullish, though, after what you'd done the, the first game against Sheldon. Were you reasonably peaceful standing there on the mat knowing what you needed to do with that final bowl, Selena? Yeah, I think for me, I just told myself, sort of, you know, anything on the purple is going to be good and um, just tried to really sort of visualise my bowl getting to that purple. And when I let it go, I knew that it was in the area I wanted it to be in um, to give myself an opportunity to get second shot or even the shot. Um, but yeah, obviously just got too much of the bowl and the jack moved. Wonderful performance though. You two ladies have given us three absolutely outstanding games and an absolute myriad of outstanding games here at Bowls 5. Selena, it's been awesome to have you here. Caitlin, you're advancing. Let's have a look and see who awaits Caitlin Inch in the next round. Hello, it's the world champion, <laughs> Taylor Bruce. Again, it's another battle of Blackjack teammates. This will be an absolute cracker. So. That is what is going to be coming up next. Taylor Bruce, the world champion, versus Caitlin Inch. They know each other so, so well. 
Now, if you're sitting here and you're watching this and you're thinking, I really want a piece of this, this is a way you can get involved with a great game of bowls. Dear Diary, my move to Somerset has been quite the page turner. Sally wants me on the croquet team, but Beth says Mahjong is where all the fun is at. <laughs> I can hear Barry's choir from here. <laughs> and Kenneth's passionate about getting everyone's heart rate up. But Molly and I opted to do a whole lot of nothing today. A wonderfully underrated pastime. High performance sports requires a laser focus every day. To get the best out of everyday life, consider vision correction by the professionals at Laser Eye Centre. With clinics in Pukekohe and New Plymouth and state-of-the-art theatres in Hamilton and now Tauranga, you'll be living your best life in no time. Get a free assessment, plus your Bowls Hub number will get you a special offer on your procedure. Easy! My hockey, my welcome back. This is the final night of Bowls Five, and it is the world champion Taylor Bruce taking on Caitlin Inch. As our stepladder elimination playoffs continue, Sean Bagri Howley is joining us alongside Alex Reed to provide commentary of this particular battle, which has been a fascinating wee contrast between these two bowlers. We go back all the way to their first up battle, which was in round one. That was the Probably one of the most lopsided scores in terms of our competition with Caitlin Inch winning that 11 to nil. But again, Taylor Bruce showing why she is the world champion. Coming back in round six and winning a, a relatively high scoring affair by Bowles five standards by six to five. So not only is this the decider to see who will advance and face Ryan Bester, it's also I guess a little bit of a a, uh, a series settler as well between these two good friends and good rivals. It's been really interesting because generally Caitlin would be considered to be the, the more aggressive of these two bowlers in their ordinary singles games. But we've seen Taylor have this absolutely deadly backhand, like mm. quick run to drive shot. Hasn't missed many of them. Although look at this for a draw bowl. What well, a those, start to this well, game. Those two opening bowls about, goodness gracious. So when Taylor played Ryan, she drove him off the park, which I thought was quite ironic. Then on the super <laughs> end, to put it in the ditch to win the game. Yeah, so it's been cool to see Taylor change her game to fit this 5 end format. So it is Caitlin now continuing down that backhand side. My goodness gracious me. This is going to be perfect. Yep. There's another toucher. <laughs> you can add a, another zero to the chalk budget for the yeah, 2025 not... proposal. Alex Reid, broadcast I'm manager sure for Bowls New Zealand. Later. Not thrilled about it, to be honest. Yeah. Well, if you, if you budget it, yeah. if you do your budgets well, you'll be fine. You won't, no, you won't get offside. No such thing as a toucher in the next season. <laughs> <laughs> no jack, just the target. <laughs> yeah, we save on jack as well. That's a good call. Well, it's funny. it's funny you mention that because obviously we've had our exhibition triples dotted throughout oh, Bowls on. 5. I'm wondering if there's a... Come oh, that's on. beautiful. This is a stunning start. And that last I did one wonder whether there's a wee of the jack. sort of uh, yep, curling Bowls hybrid short. using the target yep. map, possibly, that might be able to yep. derive for an exhibition game in the future, possibly. We were discussing that this morning, Sheldon. Yes, we were, yes. I think that actually might have uh, helped us in our exhibition match if it was just on the target, because uh, we were only losing when the jack was moving. <laughs> 
and the jack was moving a lot, let's yeah. be honest. So uh, maybe if it was just a draw to the purple, we might have had a bit more of a chance. Let's see these two players with contrasting games during round robin, but what was interesting was Taylor finishing with a, a six win, four loss record with a massive, and I mean a massive shot differential. So when she Any won, change, Selena? she uh, no won change. close. Thanks. When she lost, she lost by a couple of very, very big margins. But in the end, was the fact that those wins really counted. In the end, it was the the ends and the shots, which meant that she ranked third behind Ryan Bester, her fellow world champion. Became more comfortable as well as the as the weeks went on. Of the six players, probably the one that's played the the least in this TV league format. Yep, definitely. I believe half of her um, negative differential was caused by Caitlin too. <laughs> All of that, that's the great thing though about this game, is everything that has happened prior means nothing. This is one off, win and advance. Defeat means that you are done in bowls five for 2024. Here's Caitlin just curling another one in nicely. So it is still What's going though, on now? Taylor holding one. 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 Have I got um, the third shot? Uh, Selena Goddard, marker duties for this one. Yeah, you do. I was going to say, these, these three, I'm sure, are used to being on the rink together, but a very different format here. Two bowling, one marking. Said again, it allows the opportunity for our wonderful umpires. Sue and Margaret just have them the opportunity to just concentrate on umpiring duties if they are required to do so. That one is it just going to sneak in? Potential. The mighty effort. Still on the roll, you can see there the bowl hasn't sat down. One and a half, I reckon. Can you that one? Can you show, please? Oh, Margaret. Here we go. So, our first. I opportunity was for those ones were closer than the front red. Margaret to get um, involved. No, that's okay. <laughs> I believe Selena should uh, Thanks, Caitlin. I'm should just call it to, early. Um, to on that carpet when there's a oh, <laughs> that's... the old M word side. One and a half. <laughs> so Selena has <laughs> uh, just motioned to I us off camera like there. That's definitely two one in a measure, which is what we're seeing at the two. moment. I, I was going to say I was going to put my money there's on two, but they're too quick to measure. So there you go. So that's a good opening for Taylor Bruce. I, was say, I think we'll have to get the showing of the paddles next time it comes up because Selena Goddard passed us very, very expressive. Very competent. Take it seriously. Lollipop. And we appreciate yes. that, Selena. You're welcome. We appreciate that. You're very welcome. <laughs> so. Oh, look at this. On fire. Taylor's definitely That's come to play. Daggeringly good. Now, what does a bowl like that, Sheldon, do when you're the one who's got to follow it up, when they put it's just resting on Jack in there? Well, actually, um, I'd probably prefer it there than than, uh, than other places because it's uh, if you manage to get contact on it, that means you're close yourself. Um, it's the ones that are sort of edge of the purple that just make things just a wee bit hard. You get the outside of it, makes it closer. Inside of it, you sort of run through. If, so it, it, if it was to flop, though, would that be enough to squeeze it outside the rink and force a, a respot? Just given the way it's set? Oh, if it's set like that, if you're just a, a, to hit it, then yes. And uh, like obviously the rink here, um, for for the excitement of getting it respotted again, uh, the rink's very narrow, so um, it doesn't take much to uh, to go outside of the rink. We're probably yeah, probably less than three quarters of a standard standard rink that you'd normally play on so um there hasn't been a lot of jack movement sideways that that has stayed in which um obviously it's it's great viewing for the to get back onto the target and um, make it a bit more exciting but uh definitely makes it a lot harder to play the <laughs> to play a shot to get out of trouble when it's sitting like that well, i guess what i'm uh, uh, just to expand a little bit so i guess that the phrase that you introduced me to during the course of bowls five is crack an egg mm -hmm. so if that egg were to be cracked, if that blue egg were to be cracked, so to speak, would that be enough, do you think, momentum to push that jack past 
the yeah, outer limits of the rink or would it push you it reasonably no, down? Just, scramble the egg. Yeah, <laughs> just, just crack it there. Could, could probably sort of, you know, make it two or three feet off of the, um, off of the target. But the target is very smooth. And uh, so, like even you'll see in that last game of Selena's when she played her last bowl. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Wow. I like Look go. at that. Front oh, blue. And um, and like she sets the bowl down and to get second shot, but hits a jack and the jack moves like a foot, <laughs> with only just clipping it. Oh, there's a, like a mil, two mil gap between um, that and the jack, and probably like a three mil between the two bowls. There's a big yeah. chance that these both these bowls could go here. They should split off, and that would look very impressive. The jack won't move that far. No. <laughs> Lynch. I'm just going to see which hand, because she's normally quite confident on the backhand runner. And yep, she Stunning. is going backhand. They could both go. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's going to yep. kill. That was yep. a big crack of an egg. Scrambled. Yeah. <laughs> so again, a reminder that the there is no killed ends in bowls five. We reset. So you saw yep, that go that outside the limits of the rank. Sheldon has alluded How to. How far behind is that? Uh, closest one of uh, It looks really close point. from here. Yeah. <laughs> she's sort of just over a foot. Caitlin will be pretty All happy right. with, um, with making any contact there. Like, she's got two options now. If uh, nothing changes, she can chip the bowl for two or just that nicely we trail to the front of the purple and, um, well, back of the purple to get through. It's so important that Taylor puts this bowl back in the scoring area and she's given it every chance to do so. How much she gets back here. It needs to sit down. It needs to sit down. Here we go. It does. Pretty good bowl. Uh, hard to tell with the shadow, but that'll be close for a second. It is. The screen, it looks like it's two. Oh, don't say measure. It's just the one. <laughs> oh. close for the second one, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty confident it's just one. That's the. That's your one there. She's not going to call it a measure. They're four. <laughs> And just what from that angle you do just see just the slight shadow which is making it a little hard to gauge but Selena pretty confident that it's just the one at the moment so bonus bowl opportunity here for we should sorry, not a bonus bowl I should say it's an opportunity to try and score for we all made an agreement of uh, who who marks we're not allowed to use the dreaded word measure, measure. We're, we've got to <laughs> got to be confident in what we uh, what we think it is Oh, she doesn't want to get both of hers oh, here. I'm just going to say there's a world where she could get unlucky. Oh. Well. That could have gone extremely bad if she had got the inside edge of that. So Selena said it was one and that she was very confident. Oh, that. Oh, she's, she's, she's shaking. Shot. Oh, Imagine if please, it's please put a no, tape on it. No, oh, <laughs> it is one. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I can look at it for as long as I want, but it's not going to change. <laughs> well, she's nailed that as a marker. I, think that's, I was yeah. about to say, Good I think that's got to be the first time I've seen the marker fist pump. Or <laughs> it's the most emotional shot. we've seen from Selena all of it. <laughs> Three well, lead. that's yeah. I was about to say that's the thing we can't lose sight of is the fact that that's now a three-shot advantage for Tana Bruce as we head to the middle end of our five. It's been playing lovely, lovely bowls. That's the other thing you got to remember as well is that Caitlin's had the game prior against Selena, so Taylor's just had to come out and she's on point in and around the purple circle. That's what. Ryan Best is going to have to do, and of course that's also what we're going to need to see from Shannon McElroy, our top qualifier. Players don't have to, um, they're not sitting there in the cold, they are allowed to, to practice the bowling delivery, just not on this rink, so Ryan and Shannon will be out there delivering bowls. Yeah, well, a great opportunity to, to acclimatise, as odd as it is, but we do have to say just phenomenal facilities, and again, massive thank you to the Pukekohe Bowling Club, part of the Pukekohe Cosmopolitan club complex, this wonderful community facility that they have here in South Auckland. Wonderful in terms of the indoor bowling rinks, outdoor bowling rinks. They've got an indoor bowling club as well. They've got 10-pin bowling and all the wonderful sort of facilities you normally associate with a cosmopolitan club and a bowling club. So a massive thanks once again to those awesome organisations who have been wonderful hosts for us over the course of Bowls 5. 
more than accommodating they have been, as we see. Let's put two bowls just outside of the purple circle. Let's see it down, but it's still uh, hasn't changed a lot. That's probably been the main hand that hasn't changed throughout the uh, throughout the event. Um, just any touch of weight getting onto the circle, you just hold past the jack every time. How have you enjoyed the event? I mean, I know you're a competitor, so I know you're not exactly over the moon with regards <laughs> to some of your results. You made that very clear, and that's one of the things I've loved about watching you play your bowls is that we know what's going on. There's nothing wrong with being expressive and allowing a little bit of yourself to flow through, but now having had a little bit of time to contemplate, have you enjoyed the experience? Has it been fun? Have you learned some stuff about yourself? Oh, the experience is, um, is definitely brilliant. Um, yeah, the, uh, the new concept has definitely made me learn that uh, there's a lot of reasons why I win a lot of singles games. Uh, oh my God, what a bowl. Did that bounce back up? That bounced back up oh, for one blue still somehow. One down. Oh. I don't understand how she's one down. Wow. It's unbelievable. Am I, yeah, still at the one place. Yeah. Um, my goodness. Um, <laughs> Same measure. <laughs> uh, it probably that. doesn't it matter too. It is very close. They're both about that. And that's the one directly behind oh, the jack? You've got to yeah. call it. Okay, and He's is it about that that's a measure, right? far yeah. behind? Like how far yeah, have we got? Be worth a drink for the that. rest of the five. Okay. Like <laughs> the chalk. Oh. This one, on, is that like, you know, going to count with a touch? <laughs> this one? <laughs> Yeah, how far behind is that one? It's not, I don't think, is it? This ball here? Yeah. Um, so... Sorry, what? <laughs> how far behind is it, please? It's that from one's the jack. in front. Oh, are you talking about this one here? Yeah. Oh, oh sorry, okay. I thought you were pointing that. It's no. very hard to see from here. <laughs> oh my, what, the light. What's going on? <laughs> Can I say, Taylor, Selena, Selena, okay. Taylor, nice we'll to introduce you to each other. we shot and then see what happens. <laughs> That far, that far behind. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so Sorry confused. to put you to so much work. <laughs> it's okay. We got it. <laughs> so you, you so, so you were sorry. You, yeah. you, you learned a, a few things, is what you were. Yeah, sort of that, uh, saying. That uh, I definitely work on the the first five ends of my singles games, uh, <laughs> and uh, it. It has um, <laughs> it has been known that like out, outdoors I'm um, normally uh, you know spot, a strong finisher um, when now. it comes to With singles. So yeah, the, the first yeah, five the ends is um, has been a real eye opener and what to work on. And and, um, and also as I was saying to Alex beforehand, the, yeah, uh, the not being I allowed mean, to follow your third bowl, which I've done for close, 20 yeah. years, yeah. really um, actually affected me in this sort of format. So it's um, that could be no, something that could require a bit of training and um, and maybe practice early on if you if you're not allowed to follow your third bowl because I'm a very visual player so um, so not being able to go down and visit the head and see how everything's sitting um, did yeah did affect uh, how I played shots and costed me a couple of games actually on the attack oh, on the is, attack this is great oh that's a beautiful bowl beautiful bowl three just like that from wow, three wow. down to three all. Wow. As Selena gets the... <laughs> yeah, we got there. We got there, there we go. <laughs> Get it all sorted. Nice work. So three. And just like that, as we head to the penultimate end, we're back at three apiece. Oh, that was such a good shot from Caitlin Inch. Plucked it out. Absolutely clean. Couldn't afford to kill it because if it no. got respotted, you're one down on the respot. I think she got a wee feather off that... Uh, off the outside blue as well, just a wee touch just to kick it in. So when, when it's going, it's going. Just a reminder that game one between these two it was Caitlin Lynch by the scoreline of 11 to nil. The second one though, Taylor Bruce, the world champ, exacting revenge, winning six to five. Winner of this one will advance to the penultimate game of Bowls 5 2024, awaiting. It's another world champion, it's Ryan Bester. Whoever faces Ryan, they will battle for the right to face Shannon McElroy in the Bowls 5 Grand Final. How 
Oh, step ladder. Elimination playoff format. Well, so far, if, um, if Taylor is to win this game, it's, uh, it's stayed in the order of the, of the table. So, um, so nobody's really... That's providing if Taylor wins. It's Nobody's bad. really getting that momentum yeah. leading into that yeah. final. So that's so Shannon will be sort of wanting that to happen so that nobody's steamrolling and uh, having a whole heap of games on the on the rank before he rocks up with also having to change his bowls that he has not played a single bowl with yet. He's thrilled about it too, eh? Yes, he's oh, played every single game red and in the final, oh, we'll chuck you blue. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Talk about... Someone may be getting a bit of a roll from 3-0 down to 3 all. Is this the start of a, a wee Caitlin inch run? Possibly. This is like this again. The, the fourth ends have always been quite pivotal, quite fascinating in these tight contests. Taylor, though, remaining very calm, as you'd expect as a world champion. Touching seen a, a lot of scenarios. That would be two. Just tucks in front there, all falls, but you, you can see clearly on the white part of the mat. So a definite one there, maybe a two. That wonderful routine, just so repetitive. How's this tracking? The weight's right, the green is perfect. She's just got to get onto the white and she's in. Yep. Done right. enough. Good shot. So now she holds. The strange thing is, that looks so far away on TV. It's not. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> she's about a foot and a half away and it looks about a metre. <laughs> okay. Well, take the time that, to... Oh. That mat's only a metre wide. <laughs> Yeah, that's five good bowls, really. Yeah, <laughs> they're all within half a metre. Maybe we need to make the jack bigger. <laughs> yeah, so that it sort of contrasts a bit nicer. Well, there was, as we've gone throughout the course of bowls five, there has been a number of suggestions that have been floated round the conclusion of a, an evening's bowls. And I know that there was one suggestion thrown into the mix that maybe given the name of the national team, maybe we should be using for bowls five a black jack. Yeah. I think the black jacks should present a black jack when they go into the national competition. Mm. So this is what we're playing with. Power move. Right. Of course, again, well, I mean, yeah, most so stand out pretty yeah. well yeah. on the target. Because the white actually, when you're down the other end, the white jack blends in with the back of the target. <laughs> We've had worse Do ideas. Do against me. <laughs> add the, we'll add that to the list. We've given you... Hashtags. Hashtags. And uh, that second shot, you have to go like two rolls for shot. Like um, no chalk. <laughs> probably even only one, it would probably be pretty close. Just a reminder again, I know there'll be some people, people watching, why are they providing so much information? Let's just stress this again. We have limited our athletes to just one visit to the head per game. They can only do it after a third bowl the reason why throughout the course of a double round robin we've had Margaret and Sue providing information that was the reason why we've got competitors in this oh, this could be finals to, turn. to do exactly the same that again. And provide that information and just leave Margaret and Sue to be able to concentrate wholly and solely on their umpiring duties this is a very interesting I think this could be uh, one of the Backhand runner specialties for uh, Taylor cool. Bruce here. If you're wide, okay, it's so fine. I'm, I'm yep. two down. Yeah. What, so what's third it's shot, please? It's clock on the screen. Um, Not the so end of the world. Third shot is... That's changed now. Mm. Um, yeah, I still like that one for third. It's then what's the fourth, hitting, please? Isn't it, on the back end. Um, that one. So yeah. you'd start off with. My one? If you narrow yeah. it, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so I've got third and fourth. Yeah. All right, then. Let's hope I don't get them both and with, the <laughs> <laughs> and with the way that it Surely reacts on the uh, on way. the target, she has got the chance of getting both those bowls clean if she's properly tight, because it skids back across. Yeah. Well, here we go, Taylor Bruce. But a little uh, fourth in, she's got the final bowl. It's three apiece. But she'll be after Kate Jack in the ditch for the, for the two, I'd say. Tina miss many of these. And she's close here again. Oh, oh what? 
Somehow there was a gap. Goodness. Oh. Well, I think we're trying to figure out who's more stunned, whether it's Taylor, whether it's Sheldon, whether it's Alex, or... <laughs> that is... That was yeah. remarkable. Where was the gap? That is the worst Ooh. result. Two. And it's another chunk as well for Caitlin, and she grabs two as wow. we now head to the final end. Like, she would have been even happy just to chip one out in that scenario instead of uh, the clear road. Well, she put it right in that area, and there yeah. may have been a bowl-sized gap somewhere. Yeah. Well, obviously there was, because she found it. That's staggeringly unlucky from Taylor Bruce. Well, super end, super end, get a two. Well, Kate, play off. well, Caitlin Inch will be thinking right now I need a good opening bowl and let's just try and turn the screws here and put the world champ under a bit of pressure. And that's Done not that. a shabby start. It's a great start. Two's a bit harder to go fishing for, isn't it, than the one shot? It is. Again, let's just remember, is that Jack Lowe, Taylor please? will have the final bowl on the final end. So um, just a slight silver lining to that shot. Only very slightly in front. It's sort of near bang all on. We're surprised okay, only hit ear as opposed to clipping something on the way through to the ditch. Probably means this is about missing heavy for Taylor with her first three. Got to give the chance to to create something. Oh. Um, she'll be relatively disappointed with that one I think. Just explain Alex what you mean by the term missing heavy for those who might not be familiar with it. Uh, it means that if she misses her target area her bowl will be going past the jack in a catching position, which improves the percentages uh, for her following bowls. Great to have Alex Reid providing the expert analysis, the broadcast manager <laughs> for like Bowls said, New Zealand. I'm, I'm amongst the company of six really good bowlers. I think experts slightly overselling it. Well, we, I can tell you right now, I appreciate having you alongside me, making those sort of clarifications, just making it a lot clearer for those people who maybe aren't so familiar with the game of bowls. And, it's like to learn those little phrases. You never know, it might be something they might be able to use and impress oh, somebody when they go down to Business House or Twilight throughout the course of the New Zealand summer. Taylor's going to try and push up on the forehand here, probably try and land the ball flat. Oh, she's just going straight in the Check bin. Check in the ditch. Put it in. She's close. Oh, oh good effort. Not far off. So that would have changed things. Have we things. now committed to that, if you're Taylor? I, I believe so. So we would expect to see another attacking shot then. Because she is, yeah, there is that chance of, depending on what happens with this one, like with that weight, if she was to get the red onto red, Blue still bowl. create something. But um, this next bowl, I would imagine, is a sort of a do or die, I think. Cool and calm from Caitlin and it's Mitchell. In the way. Go up and have no. a look at the head. Hey, She's sitting, she's holding two. I think it's, uh, yeah, in or out, I think. Is it on the backhand this time, or do we stay on the forehand? Well, the backhand's hard, because if you if you go quick, you, it doesn't spin back to the jack. She'll end up just clipping the edge. Which then could not be a bad thing, because then all of a sudden, touch her in the ditch oh. for two. Am I allowed to nominate my up to the head after my second? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. Oh! <laughs> yeah, it's a. Send it to the bowls, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you get one approach to the. the I, mean, I don't I've think it was specified after the third. <laughs> Not fast. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the decision she has to make here, isn't it, Sheldon? It's like, well, if I'm going to go with weight, is it the backhand or the forehand? Mm. And what are, what are my results? Yes. I don't know the answer to those questions, it's just what she'll be yeah. thinking. I think as long as. With this one, she makes contact with the jack. Even if it kills and goes right back where it was, at least she's got the next, it's in the ditch and she can play it for two. Something has to happen with this bowl. Yeah, she needs, if she's going smart, she needs to, yeah, make contact with the jack and stay in bounds. So it's pretty much jack clean or, or uh, we're gonna be shaking hands. Taylor needs two to send us to a super end, three, for outright victory in advance. Again, she goes with silk. fourth. She slowed it down slightly. Oh, that was a nice effort. Another miss, and now she's got one bowl. Well, if you get the front red square, <laughs> split them both off, follow through onto the back red, kill the jack, put it back on the respot, you've got two. Well, without <laughs> counting in what this one okay, does. Well, that's, that's, that's the other thing. <laughs> that you may go on there with just a little bit of... <laughs> 
a little bit too early because there's one bowl and this here again could change the picture and this is a pretty pivotal bowl for Caitlin as well because she needs to be precise shield on mm. where she places this well, fourth red bowl. Well in all fairness it's any jack movement for Caitlin is brilliant but um but she'll probably be just trying to finish level edge of the mat. Make it a bowl that can't be removed in collision yeah. right? Well how's this tracking? It's going to but, be tracking like said, right Eddie. on. Okay, see now there is actually the chance to, um, <laughs> you need to, because I believe Pen she's... Hope. <laughs> well, because I believe go. she's got fourth shot, so... I don't even know if I've so got fourth, can, to be honest, but we'll she just... She can wriggle around. <laughs> yeah. Getting rid of all three, and your collision bowl just needs it's, to stay. And stay in, yeah. Well, here we go. That last bowl's probably made it nicer to get all three. It'd be amazing. Where's the target? Where's the target? Where's the target? Oh, oh that was so close. <laughs> oh, well, half a bowl more. Well <laughs> Another phenomenal game comes down to the final bowl, half and it is more. Caitlin Inch <laughs> who will advance. Oh my God! First of all. Is your heart going to be able to sort of deal with... Well, you are a paramedic, so if anything happens, you can just paddle yourself. But, I mean, this can't be good for the nerves, Caitlin. No, no. It's, um, yeah, two really tight games. Could have gone either way. Um, just, yeah, I just try to do my best hang in there and see what happens. But Taylor played some great shots. Unfortunately, that one that went through the gap, like, played it so well and just didn't pull off. So, yeah. Yeah, Caitlin, I suspect... Uh, sorry, um, Taylor, is that the one you're going to look at, that final bowling number four? Is that the one that might just sort of keep popping up in the dreams every once in a while? No, because I mean, I, I did everything I could. It's not, I mean, I can't control whether it goes through a gap or not. So I think it's more that last thing that I'll be kicking myself because that was in my control and I dropped my first one short, which gave me no option. So I think that last thing's the one that's going to haunt me, but I've been through that many times before and I've had a good time, so it's all good. I was about to say, you've had an absolute roller coaster ride yeah. here at Bowls 5. You've enjoyed it though. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, this is part of sport. There's the highs and lows and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. Well, we look forward to seeing you anytime you step on to a Bowls <laughs> ring. You've been awesome for Bowls 5. Caitlin Inch, you advance. Let's see who awaits you. As we go to our former, oh, hello. She's knocked off one world champ. Now she gets the chance to go for another. Caitlin Inch versus Ryan Bester as we inch ever closer to the grand final of Bowls 5. That is coming up next. We are absolutely set for Bester and Inch here on Bowls 5. Back in a moment. Dear Diary, my move to Somerset has been quite the page turner. Sally wants me on the croquet team, but Beth says my Jean is where all the fun is at. <gasps> I can hear Barry's choir from here. <laughs> and Kenneth's passionate about getting everyone's heart rate up. But Molly and I opted to do a whole lot of nothing today. A wonderfully underrated pastime. High performance sports requires a laser focus every day. To get the best out of everyday life, consider vision correction by the professionals at Laser Eye Centre. With clinics in Pukekohe and New Plymouth and state-of-the-art theatres in Hamilton and now Tauranga, you'll be living your best life in no time. Get a free assessment, plus your Bowls Hub number will get you a special offer on your procedure. Easy!
There are just two games left in bowls five, and this one will decide who faces Shannon McElroy in the grand final. It is Caitlin Inch versus the world champ Ryan Bester. Well, we've got Selena Goddard, who's just done a great job with the marking now. She's going to do an equally great job in co commentary alongside Alex Reid. And oh, Selena, Caitlin won a couple, getting on a roll. Yeah, and I think the end for me that really stood out was that one where she um, just chipped that bowl out of the head to get three because. Um, yeah, maybe my marking calls aren't the best, but honestly, that was a very good measure. Um, so to potentially go from one down to um, three up with two ends to play, um, after sort of trailing in those first few ends, Taylor was on form with her draw as well. So she has done very, very well there. Yep, well, as I say, this wonderful step ladder progression system, it's elimination, so Caitlin has Knocked off one world champion. Oh, she'd love the opportunity to bump off a second. And it's been quite interesting too. They've met in the round robin. You look at those, it was round five. Ryan Bester winning by the score of 10 to three, but it was a lot tighter, tighter to close out. Round number 10, Ryan winning by a scoreline of just six to four. Mm, so scary. she's closed the margin from seven to two, if she could improve on that, she would find herself heading into the final and on a gorgeous roll, but it is the world champion she is facing. I think as well, like in those um, round robin games, I think for a lot of us, the focus really was on winning the end and you did have to take those risks and sometimes it did mean dropping a number. Um, you know, we did find like if you were actually scoring a number, it was because maybe an accident happened. Um, it wasn't so much because somebody has missed a shot. Um, so, yeah, I think here, you know, trying to, I know one of Caitlin's um, internal goals is to try and win a first end. I don't know if she has <laughs> done that yet. Oh, well, she's holding the shot here. And that's it. So far, it's looking good. But um, I know when I've played her, I did get the first two ends. And I tell you what, when I was standing on the mat ready to play the second, I just knew I had to up at a level because Caitlin is quick to get into the groove. I'm well, talking about quick to get into the groove. Ryan Bester, the world champ. Quick get on. Oh, that's perfect weight. He's a bit stiff there under the line. So as you can see at the moment, that would be at least one, maybe a measure for two. Taylor Bruce is going to mark this game. So winner of this one will go through and play for the Bowls 5 pendant, which will be presented at the conclusion of our grand final. Just the one down. It's the story. Hmm. I'm allowed to say measure. It's very close for second, actually. Do you want me to just see if I favour one? Sure, yeah, thank you. There you go. This is all part of that extra information that we've been allowing under the Bowls 5 format. I'm trying to things up five baby yours games. for second shot thank you there we go good Bad clear stuff. communication now ryan has to sit and contemplate you say the visual from that end vastly different to the wonderful overhead shots that we've been getting here in our bowls five coverage that's the longest we've ever seen him take to play a bowl what's he trying to do here this is played that with such nice weight Oh, has he I have conceded, had. though, a number? Two. Let's have a look. So, two. So, Caitlin, up to a 2-0 advantage after the first. <laughs> Great lollipopping. This is good. Well, I know Selena Goddard was setting the standard for the <laughs> showing of the mark. Very exuberant. <laughs> I'm sure Taylor Bruce will rise to that challenge as well and show her own flair with the paddles. I feel like, um, you know, it has actually taken a bit of getting used to looking at the bowls on the mat and it just seems to be a really big difference between when it is just the bowls on a plain green, like one colour. Um, so we are, I think, second guessing ourselves sometimes. So we are taking this marking role really seriously, trying not to say that N word. <laughs> How have you found the 
the mat, like with bowls and collision and bowls onto the mat. Has it made much of a difference? I think though, um, so we did do some, you know, practice drives on it, um, you know, when we did have a bit of a roll up and uh, the bowls did spin on the mat, but I think because of this format of play, we actually haven't seen many huge drives. Um, we have appreciated that, you know, keeping a bowl on the green is gonna be really helpful. Um, so the bowls, I think, have been reacting the same. If anything, it's just the way that the jack's been moving. Sometimes it's just been a little bit um, heartbreaking. Um, Springs away that little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, but I, again, like we've played so many games now, we're used to it. Is It's now just part of the new normal. So uh, Caitlin holding a couple of shots. That's or should I say, was maybe holding That's a couple crazy. of shots. It's <laughs> now Ryan Bester. <coughs> The purple. These two. I believe they were club mates in Australia for a time. They were, and they're good mates now as well. So they really appreciate appreciate each other's, um, you know, standard of play, but also just the people that they are. So there's a lot of respect on the green in this game. You've got one. So there you go, Ryan. Just. Wanting that confirmation that he was holding shot. I think we've seen that over this competition too, isn't it? The mutual respect between these six world-class players. We've been lucky enough to, to have put on this exhibition of bowls. Well, it is. It's one of those sports where you're essentially right beside your competitor for the vast oh. majority of it. It's not lying. It's another beautiful shot. It's not like tennis sure when you're standing at the totally other end of a court or that sort of a thing. You're in the proximity of each other quite a lot. So, yeah, you are going to have the chat. You are going to have the banter. And when you play as much as you guys do either together or against each Taking. other. Selena, it's it's just going to be like that, isn't it? As we see Caitlin going oh. boom and just scooting through. Not far off that. It's it's the social yes. nature of bowls. I think so. And I also think that um, you know, we've all played so many games of bowls, we do appreciate the fine margins of it all and we respect each other's ability and what each other is able to do. Um, oh, I mean, look at this. Oh this goodness. is, that's ridiculous. Class. Yeah. He has got three. That's great commentary for me as I've been rendered speechless by Ryan Bester. Well, that, that is the kind of response that you expect from one of the best on the planet and the man who is the reigning world champion. Bowls concedes two and then comes back with three and it's just three gorgeous bowls as well, Alex. It's not that easy. <laughs> it's not that easy to put three bowls in the purple. I've tried. Well, as I said, this is the great thing when you get to watch world-class athletes and it's the reason why I will forever be a real advocate. If you do get the opportunity to be able to go and watch world-class athletes, irrespective of Any the sport, sport, try and watch them live because that's when you genuinely appreciate how good they are. And that's the one thing that, that's really been rammed home to me over the course of our last eight nights of bowls is the fact that when you get to watch this calibre live, you just have a greater appreciation for how really, really good they are at what they do. It's phenomenal. It's the, the ease. Everyone's delivery is so smooth, right? Like it's just um, the, the thousand, literally thousands of hours of practice that's gone into all six players' games. Yeah. They're all smooth and yet, in their own way, they're all different too. Yeah, and that's what we've learnt. Um, yeah. 20 years ago, we were coaching the same delivery for everybody. It doesn't work. <laughs> Everyone has different body shapes, uh, things that work for them. Okay. So this one under, undercooked a little. Yeah, she didn't look too, too chuffed with it. I said she doesn't give away a lot, Caitlin Lynch, but when a bowl doesn't come out right, there's just this little sort of a crease to the corner of her mouth. That's the only sort of the very rare. She normally keeps her thoughts and her look very stoic. Can you tell Selena, having played so much with Caitlin? Yeah, I think as well, like she's just so accurate with her line and her weight, so like more often than not. Um, but, you know, funnily enough, it's, I feel like it is, it, you get to this stage and it is more a mental game. Like everybody is capable of playing every single shot in the book. Wow. Just like we see this beautiful draw come in. Beautiful bowl. How many and seconds? How long is it going to stay there for? Well, Ryan's got a 
good cluster definitely, around there. Uh, you've definitely got second and third shot yeah, yeah. close for that fourth one. That's all you need to know. Here it comes. Get the ball. Oh, oh unlucky. How, Ow. how is that still in bounds? That stage, yes it has. You'll see Taylor, she goes and she marks that as just inside the rink. You see the white tape there, so that looks like it's Caitlin holding one, possibly. To tell because, because the bowl that touched, even though it's gone to the ditch, that is still part of the equation here. One bowl for Caitlin Inch. Say Caitlin's holding one, drawing for two. Oh, it's just a case of one of those toughest shots. And you've mentioned it during a couple of your commentary stints with us, Alex, how hard it is to try and just keep it inside, go as close to the ditch, but not. And she's managed to do that. Let's see what the confirmation is. Taylor's got two to go. There it is. So just busy tidying up. <laughs> two on the first end for Caitlin Inch. Two on the third end for Caitlin Inch. A three from Ryan Bester on the second. We're scoring in chunks here in this game as we head to the pivotal fourth end. Still, you blink and you miss these games. Blink. Say it, this is going to be the point where we're really going to see two players who are already pretty dialed in look to dial in even more. Very That's a good. very good starter. Is that something that you've noticed, Selena, playing with, with Caitlin, is that when things do start to ramp up, she's the kind of athlete that just also dials in that little bit more and you can see the real lock and load at men oh, mentality? Gosh, yeah, that's why she's so great at skipping. Um, you know, even just me sort of reflecting on my games with Caitlin, I think that um, I feel like I've always had the lead and then she's come back to haunt me. <laughs> um, and you know, that's just a testament to her appreciating the situation of being able to close out games. And you know, that does come down to seeing the pressure, feeling the pressure and enjoying it and, and just really taking it up a notch. So she is very dialed on in these last few ends. You see them operating down different hands. So Ryan quite happy to continue to come on the forehand, whereas Caitlin seems to be locking in on that backhand side at the oh, moment. Here come comes on. a response. That, that's ridiculous. What a bow. What a shot. I never forget Caitlin in the multi nations fours. I think, Selena, I think yes. you were in that team. Just a clutch. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable. Just about lost my voice in commentary that day. Yeah. Has that magical ability to pull out those shots when required. Caitlin continuing back in. This one's tracking. Is it going to turn for her? So one and two, please, Taylor. <sighs> I'm feeling stressed out and I'm just in the commentary booth. Taylor just stepping over the top, just checking again. So just locking your fingers, that's what she's doing. My favourite, just one to you. Which one, which ball is Caitlin's closest, please? Oh, well, that one, that one's her closest there. Yeah, thank you. So there's that communication again. It's Ryan trying to get that image in his mind. Continues on this backhand side, a forehand side, excuse me. I got this. Oh. Yeah, it's a couple again. Such finesse. Oh, just class. This is final bowl of this fourth end for Caitlin Inch, leading Ryan Bester by a shot. It's another bowl to her last one. Might need to giddy up a bit. It's diving. Well. So we got two now. You've got two. So. How does it make it three, Selena? Just, I think, tip his one over on the side. Nothing crazy, just have good weight. Goes to the back end. Walks after it. So gonna give it enough oh. of a shunt. Up and over would have been enough. Should be enough though. If Taylor was saying it was very close. On screen, looks like it was. It's two threes coming in this direction. 
Oh, maybe not. Oh, this is what we expected. There we go, just confirmation. So three for Ryan Bester. So follows his three on the second with a three on the fourth, and he'll take a two-shot advantage. So look at that in terms of scoring symmetry. Two on the first and third ends for Caitlin Inch. And then a three on the second and the fourth end for Ryan Bester. Ergo, six apiece. One ball playoff. Surely. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, particularly when we've got bowlers the calibre of Caitlin and Ryan. Caitlin will have the final bowl. This one vital to set up her final end, and that's going to look like it's going to shadow be very close to Ryan sitting at the back. She'd be happy with that. Hitting line and she's very capable of getting a two, especially when you've got last bowl. Well, this looks like it's going to just slide across, like get into the mat. Here we go. Settles on the edge. This is her second bowl on the final end, down by a couple. Want to keep that reaching weight. It's to clear the front one. Well, they've sort of... Oh, oh now the next two bowls are super duper important, aren't they? Well, they've sort of covered with each of the uh, first two bowls. They've sort of tracked themselves almost, Selena. Yeah, they have, haven't they? Um, yeah, Caitlin would look, probably would have just been willing that last one to be a bowl heavier. Oh, well, here comes Ryan now. Oh, unlucky. Oh, well played. So he's got holding three at the moment. Caitlin, though, as I said, will have the final bowl. Ryan's gone up to have a look at the third bowl, Caitlin Inch. Winner of this match will face Shannon McElroy in the Bowls 5 Grand Final. Shannon, no doubt, will be warming up, getting himself ready. He's got to perform just goal. once. Does that get a little... Yes, good does. shot. Now she's got half a chance. Who's holding shot? Ryan just wants to step in and check that. There you see it. Never been able to do the finger measuring. Just can't. Can't do it. Well, stood to see. And Taylor gives us the honest, gives us their honest opinion, which <laughs> is just not 100% sure. Ryan with one bowl left. He leads by two. Play the same bowl he, he played with the third one, I think, and if it tucks a little bit more, he's trailed the jack back around the corner. Final bowl, Ryan Bester, world champ. And he's hoping this isn't the final bowl he plays in bowls five. This is tracking, has it got enough? You hear him say up, Class. and the bowl listens. When you're the world champ, the bowl listens. So that's what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Well, can we see anything, Selena, for two? I feel like um, very tricky because all of the bowls are basically on the centre line. I was about to say, the track of all of those bowls we're looking at is pretty darn impressive. Yeah, I think... Can, um, can, can you trail the jack? I feel yeah, like you've got... Oh. The thing here is that Caitlin does have the back bowl and that means, you know, she can just push that bowl back and her one to follow through, she's in with a chance. How she does that without bringing any of the blue bowls through, um, I'll pass the mic. Remember it's I've, I've got two, no a two sends us to a super over, if she can, uh, sorry, to a super end. If she can somehow manipulate a three here, she wins and advances. And again, we're down to the final bowl. Lovely weight. Caitlin Inch. That's perfect weight for it, but underneath. Oh, it's just going to slide across. Oh, and another game. Decided on the final bowl. Oh, Caitlin, what were, you, what were you seeing? What were you looking at there on that final one? 
for the last one. I just, yeah, wanted to try and trail the jack. I had second shot, but obviously Ryan's shot was hidden behind mine. So if I could get hopefully enough of the jack with that sort of weight and follow through somehow, but not meant to be, Ryan played too good. Ryan, did you feel as though that you'd built the head nicely enough to be able to cover whatever it was that Caitlin was going to try and do with that final ball? Yeah, obviously she had the deepest ball, so she always had that opportunity. Um, but I think she had shot before my last one, just had to do that and then I was kind of guaranteed the super end if she did get the jack back. Um, but as we go going that way, I'm probably the only player that's played that side the whole time. And the first time I had to play this side and, and played three good ones, but still coming off a bit cold. I was just the first end going that way. I just couldn't nail my my weight. I was always this far, yeah, you know, through or, or short. Well, you've got one more game to go, Caitlin. Phenomenal run. Have you enjoyed this format? Do you reckon this could be something you could see yourself coming back to have another crack at? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love the opportunity, and it's been great to be amongst such great players. So, yeah, real cool format, and hopefully all the viewers have enjoyed it as well. Well, that was the penultimate game that sets up our final game. Let's have a look at what awaits us. One game left in bowls five, and funnily enough, it is the game that got us underway eight weeks ago. It is Ryan Bester taking on Shannon McElroy. The grand final of Bowls 5 is coming up next. See you then. Dear Diary, my move to Somerset has been quite the page turner. Sally wants me on the croquet team, but Beth says Marjan is where all the fun is at. Oh, I can hear Barry's choir from here. <laughs> and Kenneth's passionate about getting everyone's heart rate up. But Molly and I opted to do a whole lot of nothing today. A wonderfully underrated pastime. High performance sports requires a laser focus every day. To get the best out of everyday life, consider vision correction by the professionals at Laser Eye Centre. With clinics in Pukekohe and New Plymouth and state-of-the-art theatres in Hamilton and now Tauranga, you'll be living your best life in no time. Get a free assessment, plus your Bowls Hub number will get you a special offer on your procedure. Easy! Here it is, the grand final. Bowls five of 2024, the coin toss. Two athletes so familiar with each other. Shannon McElroy in the blue, the top qualifier. Ryan Bester in red. We've got Taylor Bruce, world champion, alongside Alex Reed and myself for this one. It's, isn't it ironic the way these formats work? These are the two athletes who started us off four weeks ago. <laughs> and they will be the ones to bring the curtain down on this wonderful Bowls 5 concept. And, of course, the opening game, we were wondering what's going on because straight out the gate we went to this wonderful super end and I'm sure these two athletes, though, will want to avoid that at all costs. They'll want to win it within the five. Come on. And then Shannon, who's oh. been sitting and watching everybody try to climb the ladder, and he's got to be on for five ends. Ryan has had the advantage, if you want to call it that, of that victory over Caitlin Inch. Yeah, these two have certainly been fighting for that top spot right throughout. Um, they haven't, you know, Shannon started sort of towards the bottom of the ladder at the very start, but he worked his way up and stayed there. So um, I think it's quite fitting that these two are in the final. Well, Shannon 
in his first four games, just the one win, so one and three in his first four, and then he's just got on a roll, and he's won six consecutive. They're just sneaking through a weak gap there. The side of the rink, working the back end. Sheldon Bagri Howley's got the marking duties. Margaret and Sue again will just concentrate solely on the umpiring when required. Yeah, I think he'll have a busy job during this game. I mean, these two are fairly accurate with the upshot, so always looking for which bowl could be the toucher and where everything ends up flying. This is a, a one little interesting nuance for this final game. Is it is the first time that we have seen Shannon McElroy wearing blue and rolling blue. Now, I, I would have thought normally that it probably wouldn't have had that much of an impact, but, but Taylor, when you're using one colour for your 10 previous Late games. Towards the front half of the it, 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 it should have, but yeah, I'm kind so of honest though, that maybe it might. Yeah, I mean, athletes can be gap. quite superstitious, so the I don't know, I try and avoid that as much as I can. Next um, one's half a bowl further. But, you know, maybe he really loved the red and now he oh, hits the blue, and we'll see what that does mentally, but also sometimes the, the weights, blue can be a little bit lighter typically in weight, so whether that changes the, the line. We'll see. It's just one of the weird vagaries of the draw and the way it shook out in round robin, to be completely honest. But it's, yeah, it's just a, interesting to see when the blue colours. Wait on the back end. Close. No, 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 no. Oh, he's better than close. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. He might have held on here, um, though, with his back bowl. Looks like it slightly has the edge of the shot at the moment. Sheldon seeing. One down. One down. Sorry, there's no clue where the jack is. Uh, so Jack's about an inch off the back, uh, still on the mat. Um, and yeah, these two are here. So back, the back one's got the shot. The chain just has that one ball behind me, right? Uh, no, there's two. There's two there. One there, one there. Pretty much touching each other. If those three balls go, do I have two? Yes. This is going to be exciting. <coughs> yeah, the the players um, often need to sort of paint that picture in their head of what the what the bowls actually look like, so that they can go onto the mat <laughs> super confident with what they're playing. I think Shannon knows exactly what's coming. Oh, now that's going to be <laughs> re-spot, and that is exactly what Ryan Bester, I think. Well, no, maybe not uh, exactly, but it's sorry. a very good, very good result. Shannon yes. throwing his arms up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and a good chunk play to start sorry, for Ryan Bester. He grabs a couple on the first end of the decider. Good result, good weight, right bias. <laughs> a little bit it's of luck in the game. <laughs> it is exactly what it is, and sometimes that what is what you need to win these big games, particularly when it's so rapid fire, as we say, just the five ends. And it's a good start. So Ryan Bester, two shots, and he'll be a little disappointed just to hang that one out. Yeah. With his opening bowl. It's not often that we see him drive and then his draw shots actually a mat length away. He's been typically very good at that first bowl straight after a drive, getting nice and close to the jack. Ryan. Watching his shin oh, drifts one oh, nicely oh. in. It falls nicely, settles there right on the edge of the purple. Ryan switches now to the forehand side. This is a response. Can he just get to the inside of that blue? No, he can't. Good second shot, though, and gives him another option for his next. Happy to work down the backhand. It's a 
side of the rink which just as we've seen over the evolution of our four weeks of bowls five and our eight nights all the bowlers seeming a lot more comfortable to go to that side there was a little bit of nerves initially you are now very much feeling very confident we've seen so many nice bowls i think the rank has allowed the players to to play well it's been very impressive over this event can't again we can't just stress enough how good the facilities here have been at the Pukekohe Bowls oh, Club. That one just sneaks through they've been such amazing hosts thanks to them to the Pukekohe Cosy Club as well wonderful facility South Michelle, the, so um, well served the red ball out the here on the wing like this. Yep. set relation to level please mate uh, one foot low foot. hard to believe that after all these weeks it just comes down to five ends it's, it's the way the format just lends itself. As I say, I think this is a it's a really neat style of the game. And we sometimes sure Sorry. there might be a few clubs around Aotearoa and New Zealand thinking, hey, this is actually quite a nice wee format. It's a nice wee introductory. That's a very good looking head, but it's a bit of a target as well. Well, he holds two, probably not the result, so Shannon now with a big opportunity here. How far up the front of the jack please mate, my one, shot ball. Eight inches. Be nice for him knowing that Ryan's played all his bowls. <laughs> Definitely got the two and try and make another one out of it. Two would draw him level, three would see him take the lead. This is the second end of the decider of bowls five. Has he done it? He doesn't want too much, doesn't want oh, any jack shot. movement, does he? Beautiful. Oh, shot. stunning. What a shot. Being three. treated to a magnificent so, exhibition. McElroy shot. responds with a three. Sheldon Bagley Howley, not as exuberant on the paddles as Selena Goddard and Taylor Bruce, <laughs> but still effective nonetheless. <laughs> he saves it for the bowls. He's got his game face on, and all he is is the marker. He's dialed into this final as well. Outstanding from Sheldon. Thing I'm good at. He's also got their game faces on as Ryan Bester and Shannon McElroy. 3 2 after two ends. Both of them scoring with chunks. The Laurel Online, you know you want to be the first Bowls 5 champion. Wonderful pendant as well that the recipient will receive too. Beautiful Bonamo. Just a reminder that they split their round robin games. This the first opening game that we referred to, that was 3 all, won by Ryan in the tie break. Then McElroy bouncing back round six with a comprehensive 8-2 two, two victory in that one. The other interesting thing when we talk about our, our favourite Alex, the, the super end, Shannon 0 for 2, I think we'll find when it comes to the tiebreakers. So he'll be the first to tell you he's due. Yeah, and he tried he tried playing first, and he tried playing second, and neither worked. <laughs> well, it's got one thing you don't give the professor is data to work with and i think <laughs> he has go. got he has got some footage some data to be able to build off yeah always oh, yeah. thinking about the game one show. Is that just on the, the back ah uh, your oh. bowl off whole bowl off yeah and rise front one that's on a yeah it's half a bowl off Just getting that information, trying to get that visualisation in his mind of that image that we're lucky enough to see with that overhead camera shot. So he stalks this one again. It's on another very good track. Far away. Jack could be nice. Tuck around the corner. Oh, oh what a shot. bow. What a bow. That's fantastic stuff. Amazing. That centre line is so important next to a player like Ryan Bester, just minimise as much as you can for him to be able to use your bowls on those up shots. Right here, trying to squeeze one. Just going to come a little bit under, Three trying to promote, is he? That's also really good. Well, 
Still Shannon holding two though. <laughs> Leading by a shot. <laughs> Heard the wee chuckle there from Shannon. Could draw three touches. Yeah, uh, I'll be pleased with that back bowl. Is that a, a bowl or two short, yeah? Yeah, exactly a bowl short. And my two blue ones in relation to each other? Uh, so, your back one's directly behind the jack, and the other one's pretty much a jack in front. The right one, that one's shorter? Uh, that one there is shorter, yeah. yeah. So, the, the back of the bowl's front of the jack. Trying to visualise it. <laughs> <He got there. laughs> Draw the picture in your head, Shannon. Just check that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's obviously not keen to go up to the head yet and use that one opportunity that he has to suss it all out. One more. Outside the three, obviously on the jack. Two red bowls closer to the centre than my back one? Yeah, you'd be two down if they all went. That's the question. Now we said, I love the way you see Shannon McElroy, he's so expressive in terms of you can see the way that he is trying to digest all of the information. He's trying but to make as it three soon touches. as he chooses his shot, he locks in. That's a good bowl. That's a good bowl. Is that three? That is a good shot. No. Two. You take a picture of it and, and, and take it. <laughs> 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 oh, oh. If I get on my my closest ball, well, can I get the two balls out or will it miss? I believe it would miss. Depends which half you get. Cool. Gosh, um, dead dead centre, I'd say you're missing. Sheldon will feel like a, a third player in this game. <laughs> it's almost kind of like so we've involved. got a, a neutral advisor. Yeah. Providing great information for both of our bowlers. Here we go. Line Bester. Looking to Cannon one out. Close. He's on Close. track. Oh, no Look at this. Oh, well. Look at this. Yeah, Cannon oh. one out clean. So that is great. Sharp. pulled it right. Has he done enough? He's definitely one <laughs> there. <laughs> Just one. Yeah, yeah, well done, coach. Does your brain hurt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. Well, it's, now, it's funny Taylor mentioned, does his brain hurt? He's trying to relay information, and the questions that are coming are so precise. He's got to be on point as well with what he's doing, too. Here we go, fourth end. McElroy up by a couple. So realistically, Ryan probably has to win the next two ends, doesn't he? Oh. Yeah, this is a particularly crucial end for Ryan. Shannon scores here, back himself to defend a three-shot lead at a minimum. Oh, that's more than useful. Just flops down on the edge of the purple. We won't know what to do with ourselves going out bowling after this without a target, Matt. <laughs> Get so used to it now. I was going to say, I'm sure Taylor Bruce will champion. <laughs> you will cope very, very adequately. We've got a couple of spears if you want to take one. Oh, with your good talent. for training. Um, no, it's been a perfect way to ease our way into the season and hit the ground running because that is not far away at all. You know, clubs are going to be humming any moment now, and um, we're ready for that warmer weather and that time out on the green. I was just saying, we were already starting to get our heads rolling about the exhibition game for maybe a, another incarnation of Bowls 5. Do you like the the curling Bowls hybrid option or sort of the, the no point jack. scoring in the middle? No jack, just trying to get it in the purple and the white. Yeah, I mean, maybe I think like that. for an exhibition match, for we're an pretty exhibition open match. for anything um, that's going to make it a little bit different, super fun, um, and an opportunity for us just to roll some bowls down and, and enjoy each other's company and I think um, that could be a very interesting way to change things up. Maybe five points for in the purple, three in the white. Imagine best yeah. being allowed to skip if there's no jack to kill. Still be able to scatter a few. Blank, sure you blank a few ends. <laughs> there's nothing left on the target. Be interesting that is for sure. Of course, what you would do is you'd take points off for any bowls that found their way to the ditch or off the rink, maybe oh, as a variation. Shot. That's lovely. Beautiful Shannon McElroy, that's lovely.
That one or two, please. What? Puts himself in a better position. Now again, there's an option. For Ryan, if he wants to go up, he's going to have the opportunity to do so after this bowl, like by Shannon. Will this hold? Beautiful. Oh, and then but just unlucky. falls, <laughs> yes. Go, please, mate. Hold it one. Uh, how far off the jack with the back of it? Let's say... Two mil. Two shot no. advantage. Okay. To Shannon Nagle. Ryan's Nagor, got so uh, two seconds. Right. One shot would give him a... Three shot advantage Might heading into the, the last. <laughs> Two know, shots okay. would do. make it dormy. Mm. Three would end the game. Almost surprised that Shannon's not considering going up to the head for this since it is such a crucial end for Ryan's him. And bold, it doesn't look super yeah, easy, but I guess he is holding shots. Uh, so. Ryan's, yeah. Uh, doesn't feel he needs to. Yeah, you would probably better level. save that if you're down and having to convert. Locks in. No stranger to pressure shots, Shannon. Just a little bit too wide, possibly. Radio. Decisions, decisions. Well, whatever it is, Ryan's made it. Yeah. He is not unusual. locked straight in on what he wants to try and do. Well, how's this tracking? How's this tracking? A little nibble! Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> Deary me! Oh, wow! <laughs> so, <laughs> it is going to be Shannon McElroy who will take a three shot advantage into the final end of Bowls 5. However, let it also be noted that means Ryan Bester will have the last say on this final end. This is going to be fascinating to watch how these two bowlers go about attacking this final end. Yeah, I'm interested to see how Ryan will approach this end, knowing that he needs that three to push to the extra end. It's taken me, it's taken me eight game nights, but I finally realised, sort of jokingly called Shannon McElroy the professor, but. I'm a bit of a movie fan, and there's a movie called The Love of the Game. Kevin Costner plays a pitcher called Billy Chappell, and he's got a thing when he's focusing, and he goes, clear the mechanism, and that's what it is for me with Shannon McElroy. You see him computing what he's going to do, and then it's like, he clears the mechanism, engages, and away he goes. See there, he's staring it down, and then straight in here now, boom. Locked in decision made, fully committed to whatever bowl he is going to bowl. A bit of a covering mission on the forehand. How's the weight? Well, that's the thing, he doesn't want to leave anything too short. That's going to sneak in. It's jack high. Ryan will be looking for a little trail on the jack. Yeah, and if he misses, um, finishing in a, in a spot that he can use it later. Oh. Very close. Oh. oh, and he's tucked it in. <laughs> He'll be pleased it's a toucher. It's a toucher. It's it a touch. stays alive. He's got a chance. See how close he thought that was. And that toucher is so, so vital. Like, like the, the back one of mine. Uh, so, yeah, the centre of the jack is on the edge of your bowl. So it's dead, dead square between the two. So there he only can go directly back. Or if anything, that side. Uh, if anything, that side. Yeah. In theory. In theory. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it is a bowls jack, which means it's actually got a mind of its own. Well, that's what it's like when you and I play. Uh, these these players seem to have better control. I'll use the tailor rule. We'll go after a second. <laughs> uh, yeah. Everyone heading up now to have a bow peep, using their one opportunity. So Ryan is going to be trying to calculate how he can somehow get a three or a four out of this. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be hard work, but wouldn't put it past Ryan to make it happen. 
movement now, do we think, or do you try put a catching bowl in and then make make the movement happen with your fourth one? Oh, I think he's got to try and move. Well, he's got. Now. He's got three. He needs three bowls, and straight away he's Watching going. It. Oh, he's moved. oh no! Oh no! Well, it can get three. It can't <laughs> be done. Uh. It can't be done. That's it. He can't get to three, and it is all done in your inaugural. Bowls 5 champion is the Professor Shannon McElroy. Seven got You started off one win out of your first four games, and you have just got yourself on a roll. You said you were a little nervy about having played all the games with the red and switching to the blue. Didn't matter a jot. How good does this feel? Uh, no, pretty, pretty awesome uh, to come out on top on this inaugural event. Um, amazing concept, amazing to be a part of. All the players involved in the whole in the whole events have been incredible. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things. Sometimes you can start off slow, start off quick. Uh, Ryan did the opposite. He started off winning all his, um, and then a couple of games just here and there. So you create your own luck. Um, but I think when it comes to the game itself. You just try and learn from previous games, and uh, I think as the event progressed, I think I just got a little bit each time and took those um, details into the next game forward. Right. So. Ryan, you, you, you keep giving yourself chances again, this, this stepladder elimination style. Talk to us about just that, that final bowl, what you were hoping to try and achieve, what were you seeing in your mind's eye? Yeah, I just had to try to, both balls could have went and kind of stayed and give myself a chance to, you know, trail the jack. Got a bit lucky if I, if I get the jack back, you know, a bit of pressure on Shannon, but he just played so good. I think every end he had one within that, so um, he played brilliant. I just want to thank Bulls New Zealand um, for inviting me over. I had so much fun and uh, hopefully it continues. Well, we've absolutely loved having you. Let's just head and confirm all of the results here from our final day and, and Alex the stepladder elimination worked an absolute treat as we knew it would. Oh it absolutely did we saw in that first round uh, Sheldon take on Selena. Selena took one step up the rung. She played Caitlin then Caitlin defeated Selena and uh, came against Taylor Bruce and the winner of that game Caitlin Inch and Caitlin versus Ryan and of course that final that we just saw there uh, Ryan uh, took on Shannon McElroy in a magnificent game and the winner of this inaugural round, Shannon McElroy. It was, it was absolutely superb. Well, Shannon, congratulations on your uh, victory here. Let's bring in the CEO of Bowls New Zealand, Mr. Mark Cameron, who has got the Bowls 5 pendant. Well, I mean, the opportunity, as, as I say, just in terms of this format, Shannon, you know, five ends, short and sharp. I think you guys are all world-class bowlers, but when I hear, you know, world-class athletes, as many, you know, it took a little bit of getting used to. Now you've had the opportunity, you've had four weeks of it. Do you like this format? Is it something that you could see catching on? Uh, absolutely, and it's, it's, it's short and quick. Um, any bowls lovers out there, non-bowlers, if you want to go down, you can get three, four, five games in within an hour and a half. So you're not you're not time restricted. Um, so amazing concept, uh, the first sort of singles uh, concept like this. So Bowls New Zealand have done a really good job in uh, creating an event that's all the players have thoroughly enjoyed. So yeah, I know you've won a lot of things, but is it always nice to be the first to win <laughs> something? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you get a little bit of bragging rights, I suppose, for 12 months. But um, I'm sure that's um, you know, next time if I'm lucky enough to get another opportunity, um, could very easily be at the opposite end of the ladder. So that's just the nature of the beast of this kind of event. So very fortunate this well, time. You're a very worthy champion, but I've got to say, we have been so fortunate to have every single one of these amazing bowlers. Sheldon Bagley Howley, world champion Taylor Bruce, Selena Goddard, Caitlin Inch, another world champion and Ryan Bester. We've got to say thank you again to the Pukekohe Bowling Club, the Cozy Club for being amazing hosts. Thank you so much for our awesome broadcast team and thanks of course to Mark Cameron, Alex Reid from Bowls New Zealand. This is a really wonderful concept. We look forward to doing this again on behalf of everybody who has bought you Bowls 5 over the course of the last four weeks. Nigel Yolden saying thank you very much for watching. We're going to do this again, make no doubt about it. Until then, hey kone rā.
Dear Diary, my move to Somerset has been quite the page turner. Sally wants me on the croquet team, but Beth says Mahjong is where all the fun is at. <laughs> I can hear Barry's choir from here. <laughs> And Kenneth's passionate about getting everyone's heart rate up. Excellent. But Molly and I opted to do a whole lot of nothing today. A wonderfully underrated pastime. High performance sports requires a laser focus every day. To get the best out of everyday life, consider vision correction by the professionals at Laser Eye Centre. With clinics in Pukekohe and New Plymouth and state-of-the-art theatres in Hamilton and now Tauranga, you'll be living your best life in no time. Get a free assessment, plus your Bowls Hub number will get you a special offer on your procedure. Easy!